I just got off the phone with Roger Stone. He has got huge news. The biggest ever. It just gets bigger every time. <laughs> he's down. He's going to be down here, by the way, next week in studio with us. War gaming, a lot of stuff. Uh, it is, of course, uh, Tuesday, the 24th day of May, 2016. We'll be here for the next four hours. A lot of big guests today, including Roger Stone. Look at DrudgeReport.com if you're a TV viewer. Vince Foster lives, resurrected by Trump's incredible courage. Trump launches a new line of attack. When I talked to Stone just a few minutes ago, he just got off the phone with Trump. In a long conversation, Stone was so energized. Absolutely energized, just saying, this guy has got so much courage. Uh, and wait till what he does next. He has the Clintons, well, you know what, in their pants. I mean, this is beautiful to see somebody stand up against these bullies and go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. <laughs> it's amazing. We're going to talk VP for Trump and more today. It's reports up on DrudgeReport.com and, of course, Infowars.com. Mark Dice doing a great job of MarkDice.com. Uh, of course, if you're a new viewer or, or maybe a fake intellectual liberal and you're tuning in for the first time, and, and Bernie Madoff is one of the f most famous swindlers and Ponzi scheme operators in history and was probably murdered in prison and he stole over $10 billion. Uh, and these people just act like pseudo-intellectuals. Evil, corruption, is just running rampant. The more it gets exposed and the more opposition it runs into, the faster it steals. And the faster it tries to corrupt, to hide money offshore, to protect themselves, but also to try to just overthrow common sense and reality in some desperate attempt to save themselves, which in history, the establishment knows, corrupt systems always end up coming down and very, very catastrophically. Wow. I had an amazing conversation with Roger Stone today. Unbelievable. I just wish I could tell you all the stuff he told me. Unbelievable. He's coming down here. He was coming this weekend, but he's got family stuff. I've got family stuff. He's coming next next, next Thursday, Friday in studio, and then we're in a war game over the weekend. But uh, Roger Stone, there's a big article in the New York Times uh, where they basically hone in and go, yeah, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is the political brain of Trump. Trump makes his own decisions and real smart, but but it is Stone. And Stone doesn't like to say that on air because he, quite frankly, he, he likes some of the attention, but he doesn't want the establishment to figure out exactly who the top general is here uh, under under the uh, main main leader. But the New York Times basically says it, so, so it can basically uh, uh, now be said. It says, Trump and Clinton's clash, two operatives duke it out in their shadows. And then it's David Brock, the pansy, who constantly attacks us every day with disinformation and garbage. Uh, so you've got this, this, this little wannabe unicorn hopping around, and, and then you've got Stone over there on the other side. But it's a very, very interesting article. But, but let's shift gears out of that. He's coming on in the third hour today. Paul Watson from London, England will be hosting the fourth hour. DrudgeReport.com has three of our stories up on it today. Um, but we'll get to those later. Vince Foster lives. Trump launches a new line of attack. And there's a big Washington Post article where they are soiling their knickers here. They, they need some new pampers immediately. And, and, and the system is panicking. We are in their heads, to quote Stone. They are freaking out behind the scenes. <laughs> I only wish I could tell you. Uh, but Trump is for real, folks. And he is absolutely a wild man a wild man i mean can, can you imagine what the clintons are doing behind the scenes right now they are so scared they are trying everything they can i don't think newt gingrich is going to get the vp spot no matter how many hundreds of millions get thrown around or offered oh Anyways, I'm just going to let Roger Stone come on, and, 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 he, and he can tell you as much as he can tell you in the third hour. But I don't ever get butterflies, and I was driving over here in the car before I went on air because I got ready at home today. And he was telling me things, and it was just, I had butterflies. just Especially because I've known Stone for years. I met him at some JFK events and knew he was a big operative with Nixon right through Reagan and Bush and knew he kind of did the recount, so I was kind of like, ew. 
But then I know over the last decade, he's written a lot of books and exposed what's going on over the last 14 years. And he's the real deal. But man, everything he's told me has come out true, right on target. I mean, it's most political operatives. It is a bunch of delusional baloney that comes out of them and not with stones. So I'm just really excited about him joining us today. And I'm going to press him on as much as he can get out, as much as he can say. Now, that said, I am just really happy for those that are a new generation and don't remember. Uh, there were dead bodies all over the place in Arkansas, dead bodies all over D.C. Vince Foster was rolled up in a carpet and taken out of a uh, cat house and uh, taken and, you know, thrown in the park. And his office was also, you know, totally expunged and cleaned up. They murdered him. And Larry Nichols told you last week that you would see this next week and the week after, didn't he? Didn't the little birdie tell you? So I have lots of little birdies, not just Stone, not just Larry Nichols. I have other birdies. And it's amazing that folks know I'm honorable and I'm on the team that wants to defend the Republic. And it's just, it's incredible to have the CIA, the FBI, federal marshals, Delta Force over the years, um, not even give me classified information, just say, this is what's coming next. And then to hint at what's coming after that. And let me just say, there are people in this government and in the corporations that love this country and have just been waiting for the American people to get up off their butts and help them take the republic back. Do you think most people in the military and our government like the fact they've shut down half our power plants crippling the country? That right there is just, you turn those back on, boom, our economy comes back right there. And, and do decent trade deals, fair trade deals, our economy roars back. They've been trying to hold the economy down as much as they can and make people quit working and make them go on welfare and make them deal drugs and make them give up. And we just won't do it. So they're just running around now going, we're going to put tranny bathrooms in. Your kids don't belong to you. We're more fluoride in the water just trying to suppress us. We're going to bring in... Tens of thousands of people with TB and put them in school with your kids. Just trying to, to see how they break our will. And George Soros running around financing his operatives going in. Little white punk ki uh, kids. I say kids, uh, little scummy adults going, deck the halls with dead cops. La, 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 la. It's time to shoot some pigs. It, it's obvious to everyone. Foreign operatives trying to start wars and race wars and kill the cops that just woke the police up and pushed them over the edge they now know what's happening <laughs> it, it, i mean it's amazing to it's not like we're poor russians that were under the czars for 500 years and had been oppressed as serfs they weren't perfect they're better than communists but yeah you, okay you took over there and killed tens of millions of innocent people because you got off on it because they were christians Okay, you, you run around an Arab Spring and killed millions of Muslims who didn't have any rights or any freedom ever. Just because you dumbed everybody down and, and, and bankrupted a lot of Americans doesn't mean there's still a lot of people that know what's going on and are politically active and armed to the teeth. And it's not going to be like some candy land where little pot-bellied commissars run around, you know, with Glenn Beck and have their way with the American people. You guys may sit around up in your boardrooms all day and have delusions of grandeur, but you have screwed this country over. You even think that you're the reason this country has been successful while you try to strangle it in, in, its, in its bed. It's just not happening. Not happening. You want to fight? You better believe you got one. You got a will? We got a will. False flag all you want. Pull whatever garbage you want. The military and the police now know, on average, what's going on. Are there some globalists and operatives in, in all those groups that are going to sit there and, and, and try to work with the New World Order and do traitorous stuff? Absolutely. But there are just as many or more patriots who now realize their back's against the wall. It's only going to get worse until we all do the right thing, and you're starting to see that happen. And people just can't believe that we could fight back against tyranny. They can't believe we could have any success. We can. Biblically, let's say it's the end times beginning. Well, if we all act like Jonas and go warn the people, then we get the 100-year reprieve, folks. This God always gives us a chance to change our destinies. God always gave Israel over and over again 
chances to repent and turn back. And sometimes Israel didn't, sometimes Israel did. But that's how it works for every civilization and every culture. And we're in a magical, mystical time right now of great good and great evil. And this is the time that all men must come to the aid of their families and humanity and basic free speech. Even the Washington Post has come out and is horrified by Facebook and internet censorship and is saying, we've got a serious problem with censorship because Chinese censorship worked and we're starting to adopt that here. Yes, and Zuckerberg's working with them and Glenn Beck comes out and says, the public just does, conservatives are just stupid. They don't know how to use social media. He actually said that. It's a fair algorithm. No one's censoring you. Facebook's own whitewash admits that rogue employees have been doing it. It's not rogue. I have the notices. We have a guest coming on next hour who this week late last week, was sent a notice and said, you're suspended for talking about Facebook censorship when it was in the news. We This has happened to us many times. We've written articles. We have the screenshots. It's like denying the drone program exists when it exists. And he sits there and preys on his listeners. I mean, he is just a freaking liar. Excuse me. And says it's not going on. I mean, I got the quotes right here. And he says, everything's fine. He says, you just don't know how to use Facebook. When Facebook admittedly censors their users, radio hosts, TV hosts, you name it, and then sits there and denies they're doing it when they send you a notice suspending you. And if you get three of them, they just terminate your account. And we're here saying, don't do that to us. That's what Nazi Germany did from 35 or so to 1940, was first just not let people have commerce, not let different people they didn't like advertising newspapers. And then it was knock their windows out and steal their cash registers. When they start shutting guns down, being able to be sold in stores, they're ending it. When they start shutting your speech down on so-called third-party commons, they're ending it. I'm gonna skip this network break, this is so important. We're talking about free speech. It'll all be gone if we don't make sacrifices now and defend it. I mean, even the Washington Post sits there and goes, yeah, a lot of censorship is start, starting to happen. It really can happen. We shouldn't let it happen. Some members of the press are getting it. But not Glenn Beck, because he's there to tell you it doesn't exist, even when they admit it exists. Here it is. Breitbart, Glenn Beck blasts conservative critics as progressives on the right, says Facebook leans left because conservatives don't know how to use social media. Yeah, forget the Facebook whistleblowers. Forget their own internal report saying, well, we didn't do it at the top, but yeah, our employees did. No, 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 it didn't happen. He just thinks his listeners are so stupid that they're not going to go look that up. I mean, it's incredible. Here it is. Facebook admits rogue employees may have shown bias against conservatives. Social media giant denies systematic discrimination. The online giant denied that it had shown systematic political bias, but admitted employees played a bigger role than previously acknowledged in determining what news is highlighted in the trending topic section. Yeah, what to feed everybody's pages. To not let individuals share something with the vote of ideas and research and open market of ideas and free association, but to make you think that's happening and then choose the trends and choose the news you see. <sighs> We used to do Google bombs where we just have our millions of listeners go search a topic. It would go to the top almost every time. They just change their algorithm to where they choose. And Facebook has adopted that. In fact, you can actually say we're part of <laughs> going to that model because they cannot stand the will of the people and what you're really looking at and doing, changing that and affecting that. So I'm going to be getting to all of this today because it's all about censorship. It's all about control. Drudge has flashbacked to a Kit Daniels transcripted article of Drudge when he was here with us in October of 2015. Well, I love another parachute in from Drudge if everyone wants to. Drudge Facebook Twitter Internet ghettos designed to demoralize individuals. And I get Drudge only gives an interview every four or five years. It's time to give it to us or give it with, but do, do an interview with Trump. I know he's ready to talk to Drudge person to person. Ready to happen, Drudge. I've told you that. Um, give you Stone's number right now. I'm sure you already got it. Or Trump, boom, let's do it. 
and magnify what you're saying, magnify what Trump's saying, or come here, let's do it. Because there's a quickening, there's an acceleration. I get it's good that you only talk every once in a while, so folks listen, but now you've been proven right. You warned us last year. Now here we are nine months later, and it's all come true. It's all coming true. The nightmare's happening. You were right. So the Supreme Court justice that told you it was coming was right. So things are compressing. I think every you know nine months, every year, whatever, give birth to some new ideas here. You know, tell us what 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 other intel you've got. But but regardless, I guess he is. He's re trumpeting what he said nine months ago. Drudge, Facebook, Twitter, internet ghettos designed to demoralize individuals. Corporate controlled social media killing open range of ideas on the internet, Drudge says. He went after Facebook. He went after them all. He said they make you think you've got a, a way to talk to folks, but you're being suppressed. You're being blocked. Totally proven right. And then it ties into this article out of the Washington Post. China, scary lesson to the world. Censoring the internet works. China is trumpeting its version of internet, quote, sovereignty. And it's now the model they're trying to push all over the world. And the answer is they tried to pass this six, seven years ago in Australia. People said no. you got to say no to the censorship and no to people that come out and say conservatives are wrong. They're not being censored. But last week he came out and said, well, there is some radical stuff that needs to be censored. So it's like, yeah, we need to censor. Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg's an incredible guy and... As long as my stuff gets out there, I'd love, you know, I mean, this is sick. And I'm not just going after Beck here, but he is the example of someone who claims he's with us, but is openly against us. He is worse than Boehner, worse than Paul Ryan, because we've always known those guys are establishment people. But Beck is just a Trojan horse, and his colleagues don't like him in radio, in his own network. I mean, he is an arrogant, horrible person. And I've called him a devil and all that because he wants to call people a devil if they vote for Trump and you're going to go to hell. Uh, give me a break, okay? You're the one out there accusing everybody, saying they're evil, claiming you speak for God, and you are a backstabbing person. And Breitbart, everybody else has picked up my rant. Drudge has picked up my breakdown from Sunday. Where, where I was, I, I tried to be calm, but they did pick up the more spicy terms where I said he's like a snake on his little pot belly, you know, groveling before Zuckerberg. But it's true. It is so disgusting. And I just, he represents that whole culture of George Will going, we are the sovereigns in the Republican Party, the superdelegates. Word is he was going to be one. And we will decide who is suitable, not the plurality of a mere majority of voters. And the headlines, Glenn Beck has finally sold out to Facebook and Obama. I, I want to tweak that. The headline I want is Glenn Beck has openly, openly sold out to Facebook and Obama. He's, he's always been a, a creepy, pro-abortion, nasty little creature. Ugh. I, I, I'm going to stop talking about him. It's just he's there telling you that Facebook isn't doing this and it's admitted. In fact, can we put up the article that was on Infowars.com over the weekend uh, with Southern, the lovely and intelligent uh, reporter uh, that is uh, coming on from the rebel.media. Um, she goes out and just shows how crazy the feminists are and how anti-woman they are, just how nuts they are now. And, and she's got all the screenshots. Facebook bans conservatives for complaining about censorship. Social media giant back to its old ways despite much heralded meeting with conservatives. Yeah, the truth is, it, it only stopped doing it. It looks like four or five days, and all of a sudden, all of our stuff surged, and then it just went right back to it, and everybody else has got censored even more. They, like, clamped down even more once they figured out, we'll take care of this Senate hearing, we'll handle it, uh, you know, get rid of the people in management positions that are blowing the whistle and go right back to it even worse than ever to shut these people up. Well, sorry, we're on almost 200 radio stations, dozens of TV stations and cable systems, global shortwave, Millions of people getting the free podcast, tens of millions every few days watching our videos on different platforms conservatively. Facebook is one of our biggest referrals. It, it, is, it, is, it is as big as Drudge. Uh, the two biggest referrers are basically month to month or neck and neck, Drudge and Facebook. Drudge and Facebook. But, but Drudge is more intelligent, informed people, and the Pentagon, the White House, the, the politicos all look at it. Facebook it's a bunch of, I'm not knocking them, but it's a bunch of, you know, hairdressers and, you know, uh, school teachers and folks that are smart, I'm sure, but are more into gossip. I mean, we get trash traffic from Facebook, but it's okay because we want to, we want to wake people up. When I say trash traffic, I mean, it's, 
We have algorithms on all of it. So everything's just built to surveil. We can't help it. It's the way it works. We can go right in and just go, these are a bunch of poor, dumb people that all have degrees and are pseudo-intellectuals and bag groceries at the local grocery store. I mean, it's like the Mark Dice thing we played at the start of the show. Almost every person he talked to in, in L.A., they're on the coast. Uh, it was 9 out of 10, as usual. That's the number. 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10, sometimes 10 out of 10. It's about, about 9 out of 10. Said, yeah, we want Bernie Madoff to be his VP. Bernie Sanders. And he would talk about it and everything. And because they go, oh, yeah, absolutely. I did my research. You know, it's a very smart economic background. Oh, of course, what we need. They just want to act like they're smart. They don't know what planet they're on, okay? And so, it, I'm sorry. You, they were able to teach Helen Keller how to write and how to talk and everything. She was a wonderful lady. But it's like Helen Keller. That's what we call trash traffic. These people do not know what planet they're on. And they stop me and go, you're the guy? I had dozens of them go, I saw you saying Michelle's a tranny. She kind of does look like one. And I go, look, it's, it's kind of tongue-in-cheek, but she looks like a man. And they're trying to censor people that say it. And Joan Rivers said it was dead. And so I'm going to say it, okay? And it's taken out of context and fed to you so that you freak out over it. But that's the way I reach out to you. And they just go, uh, uh. And it's, I, I, I'm afraid of them. There's no, they have dull eyes, black, white, Hispanic, you name it. They are and that's what MSNBC is all about, how smart they are. These people are the biggest chump morons the galaxy has ever seen. The known ex universe. I, I mean, it, 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 but they have this, <laughs> I'm smart. <laughs> What's that word mean? <laughs> how many degrees you got? Oh, I'm sorry. I quit college because I was already so hugely successful and, uh, you know, making almost as much money a year as the president does a year when I was 24. That means you're a failure. Oh, yeah, I'm a failure. <laughs> I wanted to be an engineer. I'd go to school. I want to be a lawyer. I'd, I'd go to enter the guild and, and kiss the rings. I didn't do that. And by the way, you guys all say... It's bad to make money, but you want money, other people's money. I took the money I made and put it all back in to build something Americana and original to take tyrants on head on. And you know what? The American dream still lives as this rhinoceros out of control operation rolls over the enemy. Look at these headlines from DrudgeReport.com. Sanders warns of messy summer. Yeah, because he's really winning and they want to steal it from him. Not a monarchy. It's true. Women wary. I'm not with her. London Guardian. Yeah, I mean, Hillary is a mob boss, war criminal, crazy woman that brags about killing people that she didn't personally kill. And then, I mean, even if you kill people, you don't brag about it, lady. And I know you've, your, your folks have killed a lot of people, but you haven't personally done it, you witch. Probably can't even mow the yard. You're so weak. Excuse me. And then she says she's, you know, under attack and sniper fire. I mean, she's a Brian Williams on steroids. But rape ad features Juanita Broderick, who we've had on before. Bill tells panic Dems, just relax. And you know, like the women you rape? Salon, Trump is going to win. And they say it's because of the tidal wave of fascist vitriol. You people promote pedophilia. And you say our kids don't belong to us, freaks. I mean, you just kept poking and punching and, you know, globalists blowing up federal buildings and blaming it on us. We know about what you did. And I was just handed another article during the break, an incredible one. I'm just, I'm, I'm just totally overwhelmed now. Where... Where they're coming out in mainstream news saying, reading to your kids. Will you guys print me that again? Reading to your... Buckley gave it to me. I got 500 articles here. I'm not exaggerating. <sighs> reading to your children. This is what colleges are now teaching. And even teaching them how to speak is racist and elitist. And that you should not tutor your kids or have private schools and actually make them dumb. That's like, you know, them trying to teach in schools uh, abonics. Well, jive talk from city to city is different. Just like hillbilly talk from Kentucky is different than East Texas. 
There are people in East Texas, white people, that talk like this. Mark, don't let them Come on, big nerd. You don't go then turn that into a language, set up a chair at a university and spend $10 million a year teaching people how to understand the beautiful dialect. And it's the same thing with jive. Absolute garbage that they want us to adopt so no one can communicate with each other. This is the end of language, and now they've come out in major news. I had three articles. I'll find it here in a minute. I was reading it in the break. That's why my head is just spinning. I mean, this is official. They're going to say now it's evil if you can talk. And I always said, if you can tie your shoelaces or two plus two equals four, or you have language like idiocracy, the genius, the genius, Mike Judge. This guy is so smart behind the scenes. People say, man, it's weird. Mike Judge doesn't talk to anybody because he thinks they're, he's not arrogant. He's just people can't really talk to somebody with 180 IQ. He helped design the F-18. I mean, he was like the main project manager on the F-18. Before he dominated the world and made $3 billion in animation. Excuse me. Good friend of mine. I'm not name dropping. He's just amazing. Amazing. He talks to me. I'm proud that he talks to me. And in Idiocracy, they bring him into the court, and there's, he, the guy is able to talk. He was just a 75, 80, 90 IQ maybe guy back, you know, in the year 2000 and whatever. But in the future, everybody's so dumb. He talks like fag. <laughs> and his own lawyer's laughing at him. And he's like, well, wait, don't I get to put on evidence? That, and they're just like, shut up, fag. Everything he put out was a hit. This, they didn't even show that in one theater, but L.A. and Austin to legally cover it and delisted it in the movie phone system so people couldn't even find it. Back at the time you called in to find where a movie was playing nationwide. He told me even more privately about it, but he, on record he told about the censorship. They saw that film and got so scared of it because that's their actual plan. People sometimes will walk up to you if you're reading a book and go, what you read and think you're real smart? I have seen it happen, and it's happened to me. I was in Cancun once when I was 16 reading Order of the Death's Head. And I had these big muscle guys come over and go, what are you reading a Nazi book for? And when it's not a Nazi book, it's an award-winning book about the SS. very interesting to understand government. They go, wow, what are you, who are you? Why do you know all this stuff? And I'm sitting there and... I was in really good shape, you know, they're like, well, what are you, a college student? I'm like, no, I'm 16. They're like, well, we're Italians. They're Italian-American guys. They're like, we're Italians. We don't like Nazis. And I went, really? Mussolini was, was, was a Nazi. and actually started the whole fascist movement. The Nazi salute comes from a Rome. Whoa, how do you know all this stuff? You're weird. They're like, well, actually, we're kind of like, you know, mobbed up gangsters. Here's our girlfriends. They have these hot girlfriends. Come party with us and hang out. But, wow, you read a book. And it was like, they're like buying me margaritas and stuff. <laughs> We had some more fun after that. But the point is that they were just blown away that I was reading a book. I always talk about Order of the Death Seg, that's one of the books I read that just had so much about secret societies and how stuff really worked and British intelligence had already infiltrated Hitler when he was just a member of the Nazi party but was already planning to maybe put him in power. They had a bunch of other people that were pushing. Can, can, can you guys Google Order of the Death Seg and like put that cover up? It's got like Hitler and the SA marching in Munich on the cover of it. But, I mean, it's wild where, I'm not even bragging saying I'm that smart, but it is bizarre that they now want to basically imply it's illegal to be able to talk. Or if your child knows how to read, that's bad now. See, they're going to reduce everything to make us equal. They're going to make us all dumb as possible. And they're now going to the next phase, admitting it. There it is. The Order of the Death's Head. The story of Hitler's SS. That is a very important 800-page book. Read it twice. 62 bucks. Wow. All right. Let's just. Sh I'm going to shut that down. But I will get those articles where they're now calling for that uh, and cover it uh, coming up. Let me just give you what else is 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 going on here. I am so excited about Trump coming out and going after. The Clintons, with Vince Foster's death, because they killed him, we got him. And the fact that Nichols has all the files that have been ignored until now, and Inquirer is coming out next week with it. This has got him scared because no one has ever taken them on like this. And this is just such an epic time to be alive. I can also feel the danger level of it.
And so that's another reason I'm so excited. Plus the other information I've been told, which is just hard to even do a broadcast when you know stuff like this, but I've just got to sit here as a real journalist and not talk about it mm. now, until the time. Trump escalates attack on Bill Clinton. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump is reviewing some of the ugliest political chapters in the 90s with escalating personal attacks on Bill Clinton's character. By the way, I was watching Fox News this morning. Three different reporters over an hour and a half of different shows that I was watching while I was getting ready and researching and then working out. They kept saying, oh, the stuff of the 1970s and 80s. No, it was the 90s, and they were covering it up. And they're trying to make it sound old. And then I kept hearing other hosts say it off teleprompter. So that's the level of disinfo, even on Fox. Because the Clintons and others are like, we made a deal with you. And, and News Corp, we're not going to come after you for your hacking scandals. We made a deal with you. We didn't have the Justice Department indict you. Leave us alone. And so imagine they're trying to sit on all those reporters and have them engage in disinformation, and Sean Hannity's not doing it. Bill O'Reilly is. He was attacking Trump last night, like saying, stop going there with Clinton. Oh, you're supposed to say he's going after women, Trump's hurting women, and it's not true, but then Trump's just supposed to sit there while Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton basically stand over him and just shovel garbage on him. Oh, well, he's not doing it. And Trump said, listen, I'm being attacked. I'm, I'm, I'm not starting this. They hit me. I'm going to hit back. So we're going, we're going to town. And he came out this morning with the Vince Foster stuff. In one recent interview, Trump said another topic of potential concern is the suicide of former White House aide. It was a serious death and cover-up, which remains the focus of intense and far fetched conspiracy theories on the Internet. Uh, you mean the police report, the witnesses, the fact that we don't believe known liars, I mean, stuff like that. Like Hillary said she didn't have a server or extra email, but she did. Like all the other lies. It's the one thing with her whether it's Whitewater or whether it's Vince Foster or whether it's Benghazi, it's always a mess with Hillary, Trump said in the interview. So he's letting them know, you want to take the gloves off, we're going to do it. But again, everything's okay because Glenn Beck came out and said, we have progressives on the right. That's right. We're the commies now. We're the globalists now. Not him meeting with Zuckerberg, who's censoring. And Zuckerberg's own report admits they have employees censoring people. But he goes further and just says, it isn't happening. Well, you heard Glenn Beck. You heard him. Um, Laura Southern, everybody else, where they send you a letter and shut your account off and let you know it's suspended because you talked about censorship. Because you talked about censorship, we're going to censor you because it doesn't exist. That is 1984. We're going to censor you because we're admittedly censoring and you link to news articles where we're censoring and you're a popular, beautiful young lady. And so we're just going to suspend you and we're going to cut you off next time you do it. But we're not censoring you. <laughs> so don't talk about what happened to you. Like Bill Clinton, you talk about the fact that I raped you. I'll send state police to break your freaking legs, lady. You understand? Or that of your of your brother or your son. And sometimes they send folks to break people's legs or kill them. It's the same thing. Hey, listen, you talk about censorship, we're going to shut you down. You self-censor and you sit down and you shut your mouth or it's over. My, those are large canines you have there, Mr. Zuckerberg. My, what big eyes you have. <laughs> My, what big teeth you have. <laughs> yeah, all the better to eat us with, I know. Predator. We put Zuckerberg, the consummate. Let's put up America's psycho Christian Bale's photo next to Zuckerberg's. We should start that meme and, and ask, who looks more like a psychopath? Those two or Bill Hemmer on Fox News? And they're going for this psycho look more and more. I see more and more guys on Fox News reporters that look like psychopaths. Just the perfect hair, the perfect little face, and the sociopathic look in their little loving eyes. Now, there's that. Yeah, but let's show the American Psycho when he's being friendly, when he's being nice, not when he's killing. And then let's, 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 let's then cut to Glenn Beck and Mark Zuckerberg, and you just see the look because the eyes are like shark eyes. They're smiling, trying to look friendly, but it's an adapted face. Just like an angler fish, it looks like a pretty light, looks like a tasty you know, glow-in-the-dark plankton and, and little fish things. Boy, I found a big old juicy plankton or a big old, uh-oh. But you see, you don't see in the dark laying there stalking the big black fish with the big long teeth and the little shark eyes because there's nothing behind them but 
The gates of hell come into the darkness. If you saw Zuckerberg right now, you'd understand what I'm talking about. Hello, there's another little Fred. Come to me. Come to me, my child. I have ice cream in the van, in the white van. I have candy, puppies, puppies, puppies. Now let's see our American Psycho. Now, <clears throat> there's only one thing they fear. The wolves fear the sheepdog. And this is the return of the sheepdogs. Forged in history. Ready to take you on. You might be fast. You might be good in the dark. But our teeth and our jaws are twice the size of yours. When we get them into your flesh, we don't let go. You don't have your sleek coat either. But your teeth can't get through ours. Not as easy, that is. And by the time you get your teeth into us, you've already got our teeth around your neck and they've already snapped five or six times. That's why you fear us, don't you? And you know we're coming. We hunt the hunters. And we have emotion and love so much stronger than your evil. And much more terrible. Much more fearsome. Way, way more strong, and you know it. Your spirit of old knows. And your fall is here. You can say what you want about Trump, but he is the archetype of the man standing against the evil, going up against known killers, and they are scared. And that spirit is strong, regardless of what happens to Trump or myself or anybody else, Matt Drudge, Roger Stone, let it be known the truth is out and there's no putting it back in the bottle. You're not going to censor us and get away with it like communist China. It will be our undoing here. We have been running around for decades like chickens with our heads cut off, preparing and warning the people. And now they remember we warned them. And the truth is rising. When evil comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against it. So have confidence, patriots. Take action and know what you do and the links you spread, the articles you email, and, and the talk radio shows you call into and C-SPAN. And then when you run for office and when you take action and when you, when you give political donations, it, it doesn't matter if that even contributes to the victory. All of it thrown at the enemy will contribute in a tsunami of liberty and awakening. And your energy and your free will doing the right thing, providence will then align with that and God will step in. That's not magic. That's energy. That's the universe. That's how it works. And the enemy knows that. And the enemy is scared. That's why Obama's always saying, I need you to get behind me. I need you to believe. Don't lose faith. When he speaks to the Democrat audience, don't lose faith, Biden says. Don't lose faith. I know it looks bad, but we care about you. We are going to deliver you. Believe in us. Or like the gods of Olympus, they will die. It's metaphysical. And they're dying. They're stumbling around. <sighs> they're throwing everything they got at us, and they're getting weaker, and they're turning to sand. They're like the vampires they are. They're turning to ash. And the darker, more twisted ones of them are getting back further into the shadows. They're jumping on jets and running already just to be safe, just to watch the carnage from afar. Uh, by the way, we are listener supported. I want to see Hillary for prison t-shirts everywhere. Every listener, a fraction of our audience has gotten these. and They're already all over the news, all over Trump rallies, all over everywhere. Everyone should go get a shirt and the profit we make funds the operation. We need more funds. We're doing okay, but if I had a lot more money, I could do a lot more. I need more editors, more camera people. I need more reporters. I need more money to send people all over the place. We're all sail on. And we are moving and, and growing as fast as we can at a safe level. But I need to be strong up against the enemy. I need the provisions. These are war bonds. Go get the Hillary for President shirts at InfoWarsStore.com. Get the X2, 20% off. It's going to end Sunday. 20% off on Survival Shield, nascent iodine X2, Coil Silver, Silver Bullet, Super Male Vitality. I'll be back soon, but Anthroplex is here. It's excellent. 
vitamin mineral fusion. I mean, that's what we come with, just good, high-quality organic vitamins, minerals, a political speech. Just everything we promote is something we believe in. Non-GMO heirloom seeds, 10% off on the water filtration systems. Don't drink the water, folks. Even the well water is contaminated in most areas with glyphosate. you got to put it through filters. We have the best systems, lowest prices. InfoWarsStore.com, 10% off at checkout on the Pro Pure, the Alexa Pure, and other systems that are excellent. All your survival needs. It's so important that we all be on our toes and prepared and self-sufficient. InfoWarsStore.com. Thanks for the support. I'm going to cover this more in the next hour. Here's the article. It's in the National Review. It's, it's in several other publications. Buckley dug this up this morning and, and actually went and looked into it and actually found the, the university teaching it. Professor, if you read to your kids, you're unfairly disadvantaging others. So see, you doing well in sports or anything is, 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 is not racist, it's disadvantaging. So if LeBron James is, you know, better than, say, a uh, five foot ten Hispanic guy or white guy at basketball because he's more athletic, he's taller, well, you got to then disqualify LeBron James. That's where this is going. This is so amazing. I'm going to cover that, but I wanted to just let you know the source of that when I said it. I've been telling you it's going there because that's their plan. They they want totally mentally ill basket cases. There's another story up on DrudgeReport.com. I don't think I've ever seen four or five articles on there at once. Did we go to war? Indianapolis residents stunned by martial law drill, military drill. We thought the world was ending. I'll get to that coming up. But before I go any further, I wanted to just talk about just in the stack today. I didn't even set out to find these articles I've got like 30 articles, I'll just cover some of them, where the Clintons are involved in open corruption and just horrible stuff. Here's an example. Their whole green carbon tax fund that she was raising money for was to push fracking and to lobby for fracking. The oil companies, the big ones, are the ones, Dutch Royal Shell, BP, and ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil was one of the last about 12 years ago to go ahead and get on board, but they did to push carbon taxes and shut down natural gas and coal. And it's in her emails that she was trying to shut down other cleaner energy and, and frack. You, 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 Al Gore with Enron came up with, in 1989, look it up, it's admitted, the carbon tax. It's written by oil companies to jack you. But I have pseudo-intellectuals go, I bet you find it by the oil companies. Oh, yeah. Tell us about your oil, Alex. And I'm just sitting there going, uh, well, actually, my family has natural gas, and we make money of oil, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's just, it's just all bull, folks. I don't get any money from any stuff. I got family gets a little bit of it. But that, it's like they accuse you like you're getting money. Here's Hillary openly doing it, screwing everyone over for fracking. And I've just it just goes on and on. I mean, look at this. Look at this stack of articles. And they all tie together. I mean, I always knew this. I always knew Ken Starr went after rape and stuff like that because they couldn't go after Chinese communists inside the White House and missile secrets and reentry MERV technology. So not one warhead, but 20 warheads, you know, hit U.S. cities when one ICBM comes back into orbit over Northcom. Total treason. I mean, they should be, well, you know, that's high treason. I mean, given our enemy the <laughs> system so they could nuke us. I mean, and it was all confirmed. Ken Starr wouldn't go there. Ken Starr, who tried to bury Bill Clinton, now only praises him. Uh, no, his lobbying firm was basically funded by the communist Chinese. It was all fake. They took the good impeachment that got started by David Chippers and others and derailed it. I had David Chippers on. I had congressmen at the time uh, from Georgia on who helped get it going. I mean, they told me this is what it was. And here it is all these years later. The New York Times resurrecting Ken Starr. 20 years later, we can just act like he's a great guy, see? The liberals can. He tried to bury him, but now he loves him. No, he saved him. First on CNN, Virginia Governor Terry McAuffle under federal investigation for campaign contributions from a communist Chinese billionaire. There, there you go. This is what's going on here. Hillary Clinton's energy initiative pressed countries to embrace fracking, new email show, The Intercept. Yeah, shut off our energy, make sure it all goes to the third world. They don't want us to have any... Here it is. Obama 
raided $500 million from Zika Fund to finance UN's Green Climate Fund, which they just give to themselves. By the way, the UN pays money to him. He's on the carbon fund out of the mercantile in Chicago. They're just looting everything. I have dozens more of them looting foundations, robbing little kids, just running around, and the left just goes, yay, yeah, we like it. We like a strong woman. Try to just run around with a battle axe, chopping kids' heads off. All right, let's get serious here because I got a loaded gush coming up. I mean, we are loaded for bear today. What happened is I came in here, I watched a lot of news, did a lot of research this morning, and I came in and went back through the news, and it was just such a compendium of incredible stuff. I kind of overheated. I mean, I, my head was complete, was actually spinning a lot last hour. It's just, it's just, each stack just totally shows you what's going on. Just a whole stack of them robbing pension funds, robbing little kids, robbing hospitals, robbing foundations, just stealing and scamming and just fracking while they run around trying to shut down all the clean energy. And just bozo leftists everywhere that want, to, want Bernie Madoff, nine out of 10 Californians want Bernie Madoff as the VP running mate of Bernie Sanders. I mean, I don't get pleasure off how dumb they are, but we've got to be able to defeat armies of drooling zombies even if just 20% of us and stuff know how to tie our shoes or wipe our hind ends. I mean, we're not on power trips. We just are, you know, we're, we, we know we're alive, we're conscious, we understand humanity's history, we know where we're going, and, and we just, we're not going to be ruled by a bunch of psychopaths and armies of drooling idiots. I just know we're going to defeat you. I know it. It's going to be a rough haul, and it's not going to be, you know, Won or lost with Trump. It's just a symbol, a gauge, an indices, an indicator, a radar image. I just think about the hundreds of millions of Chinese that live in total slave conditions. And I think of the billions of people just living in, in, in nightmare existence. But so many of them are even happy compared to the richest trendy in the West with their distorted, twisted worldviews. But I think about the well-meaning, dumbed-down liberal that really does want to help people and really does buy into all this guilt trip. I mean, if we could just get them to have a few original thoughts, like fire, it would spread in their minds and they would become awakened, illuminated. I don't mean that in the Illuminati term. They're a counterfeit of that, but illuminated, enlightened. And, and because once that happens, it's a chain reaction. And all they need is someone reaching out to them and actually lovingly trying to wake them up. And we won't get to all of them and we won't save all of them, but you can get to some of these people and it's our job to try to, to see them as humans and not just laugh at them. And Lord knows I laugh at them, but it's like, a sad laugh because they are so dangerous and their controllers like Rachel Maddow that knows that you know he is preying on those people is, is just is is so horrible they get off on lying to their audience and, and that's what I can't stand and Lynn Beck uses the exact same tactics as the left all right, we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen, with a guest that got censored by Facebook. Come back, says doesn't exist. Former Clinton handler and insider will be joining us at the bottom of the hour. Larry Nichols is battling lung cancer. He's so sick, he can't even be on video Skype with us. Uh, somebody should pray for him. He's really fighting to stay alive, at least through the campaign. I and mean, this is serious. He's the big source for Inquirer next week uh, on the newest Vince Foster uh police reports, documents, and things that no one's had the courage to even publicly put out. Last time he was on, breaking down the Supreme Court justice and the fact that he was probably killed, he actually had Homeland Security there coming into his parking lot, pulling out. The police came, and they told the police, go to hell. Uh, I mean, that's how serious this is. So uh, this is very dangerous stuff we're going to be breaking down coming up at the bottom of the hour. He told us last week, watch, you know, you'll see next week, uh, Vince Foster and Trump talking about it, and of course that happened. And he talks to a Supreme Court justice and others. So this is very serious information. He's the original source on Whitewater, on Vince Foster, on the murder, uh, and the rest of it. Then Roger Stone, 
is on the cover of the New York Times today, dealing with the fact that they've sussed out the fact that he's the main main political brain working with with Trump. Of course, his business partner uh, is quarterbacking, making sure that they don't steal the delegates. They've been successful so far on that front. So a lot of big news with Stone joining us. I'll just stop there and let you let him tell you as much as he can. But he was the most excited I've ever heard him. Had a long conversation with him this morning. He just got off the phone with Trump. Now, what, what's front and center for us to understand is we're winning the information war as classical constitutionalist, classical liberals, patriots. You can call us right-wingers, whatever, but really we're for lower taxes, uh, national sovereignty, family rights, tolerant of religion, tolerant of people's uh, lifestyles, whatever. Just, just don't try to run our lives. And Zuckerberg in the last year has met three times with the communist Chinese top censors. That's on record. He told a few months ago on a panel in Germany, uh, German Chancellor Merkel, that he would censor people for her and was getting a handle on. We played that clip. Facebook's hired former Stasi members. This is mainstream news to, to, to go after. And then they call the police and they come arrest people that criticize open borders. France is arresting the main presidential front runner and has indicted her, Marie Le Pen, for saying this radical Muslim invasion is as dangerous as the Nazi invasion. So. Censorship is happening all over the world. They're reading from the same script. They're moving. The collectivists are moving. The authoritarians are moving. And a lady who I've seen Paul Watson interview many times, we featured her videos. Drudge is linked to them. Now, she's amazing. I'd love to get her as a freelance reporter for us. I just got so busy. I've never reached out to her, but we're doing it now. Um, she was censored last week, and she has the screenshots. They're up on Infowars.com. Facebook bans conservative for complaining about censorship. And they said, we removed something you posted and basically suspended her and said, if you keep doing this, we're going to get rid of you. This has happened to us. We've got screenshots over the years. Memes of, of, of you know about Benghazi and Navy SEALs getting killed. Just show their pictures, no blood, no nothing, and say, she lied, they died. They suspended us for three days. So even the Washington Post is out today saying Chinese-style censorship is dangerous because it worked and it's here. Now, Glenn Beck comes out and said, Glenn Beck blasts conservative critics as progressives on the right. Right, Bart? And says it's not happening, and we just don't know how Facebook works. Even as Facebook admits that their own employees did it, but claim they were rogue. So they're admitting they're doing it, but he says it's not happening. Boy, what a friend. What, what a friend. I mean, Zuckerberg admits it's going on. He says it's not. This is just an uh, incredible betrayal. Now, going to Lauren Southern of TheRebel.media. Lauren Southern is a contributor to TheRebel.media from Vancouver, B.C. She's a second-year student studying political science. This may be an old bio at the University of Fraser Valley, who is well-known for being very opinionated. And it just goes on from there. Her videos have gotten millions of views. She just goes out and nicely talks to liberals and social justice warriors, and they flip out. They absolutely flip out. And, and now I guess she's going to be silenced, and the Canadian government saying they're going to arrest you. If you say transgenderism doesn't exist, well, whether you believe it or not, I should be able to say the moon's made of cheese if I want. So real tyranny's here. It's not coming. As Matt Drudge was warned last year by a Supreme Court justice at dinner, he came here to warn us. He's reposted that interview at DrudgeReport.com. So this is happening. Nightfall is here on Western liberty unless we rise to the challenge and get more vocal and take action. So she's here to tell us what happened to her, her views on all this, and how she thinks we fight back against this. I think we all speak out more. I, I think we, we produce more information. I, I, I think we file lawsuits. I think we get aggressive because this is serious. Lauren Southern, thanks for joining us. Hi, Alex. Thanks for having me. Wow. So, I mean, uh, break this story down for us and your view on it. Right. So I had a friend of mine post on Facebook that Donald Trump doesn't hate Muslims. He just wants to defend the country from ISIS. There was no Nothing lewd about the comment. It was purely his political opinion. And it was removed by Facebook, and he was issued a ban. So I took that post. He sent me a screenshot on Skype, and I shared it on my Facebook and said that it's absolutely disgusting what Facebook is doing to conservatives, and they need to stop. And not only a couple minutes later or maybe an hour later, I go check my Facebook, and it does the whole You've been logged out of your account. That's always the note that you get when uh, you're in crap with Zuckerberg. And then you log back in and it tells you what you did wrong. I've been banned a few times now. But now it's 30 days. I guess next is going to be forever. 
I know, I know. They will remove your account uh, next time, which is kind of scary because I have 30,000 followers on there that I try to show my political opinions to. But they removed my post for complaining about Facebook censoring conservatives. And is this not total 1984? Yeah. They admit they're doing it. It's happening. There's a Senate investigation. You talk about it, and then they remove it and say it doesn't exist. I mean, that is incredible. Yeah. Oh, it's absolutely incredible. And you know what? Uh, I only, I've been banned before for posts that should not have been banned and I could not contact Facebook to get my account back and just had to wait a week. If I had not been, if Infowars had not reported on this, if Drudge Report had not reported on this, Facebook wouldn't have given a crap. They would have left me banned and my account may have disappeared by now. Um, but they wanted to save face. They wanted to save face. So they contacted my personal email and said that this was caused by human error. Now, Everyone knows the moderators. When you flag a post on Facebook, the moderator has to look at it and decide, does this fit our community standards? And that moderator looked at that post twice because he first banned the first one that was removed and then looked at the second one where I was complaining about it being removed and banned that one as well. That wasn't just an accident. That was on purpose. And Facebook knows it. They've come out and finally admitted it. And yet you still have establishment people like Glenn Beck coming out and saying, this isn't happening. I don't know why he's saying that. It's very strange. Maybe it's because it's majority Trump supporters that are being banned. I don't know, but it's definitely happening. And it's very scary. You have 60% six, of millennials get the majority of their news from Facebook and that trending timeline. How much damage is this doing that they're not getting both sides of the story? You're right, and they're panicking. I'll tell you why. They're moving into authoritarianism. Even the Washington Post says we're in danger now. This is out of control. And everybody's really got to have a gut check here. If you're so-called liberals, you shouldn't be against other people's free speech. This is outrageous. This is dangerous. If they can censor Laura Southern or Alex Jones or Matt Drudge, who they admit they had orders to just block everything Drudge, which is just news, they can block everybody next. I mean, Obama has persecuted whistleblowers in the media more than all presidents combined. We're in danger, folks. Europe is arresting people for mild speech. Come on, let's not go down this rat hole. But Beck knows the censorship's coming, and he wants to be the token conservative, the Judas goat, to lead people into the future and to say everything's okay. Authoritarians always do this. In China, they have an authorized church. They have authorized mm -hmm. conservatives there. Anybody else gets executed or imprisoned. I mean, this is very dangerous. He wants the position of Judas Iscariot in this new system, and that's why he's so dangerous. Well, yeah, you heard Tucker Carlson talk about it. He said it was the most disgusting thing he had ever seen, the way that Glenn uh, was sucking up to Zuckerberg. And, I mean, I didn't think... He said he wants to be a like manservant, that. a manservant. Yeah, yeah, it, it's just... That's, that's very scary to see. And you know what, Beck and um, other establishment conservatives may think this isn't happening because at the moment, Facebook can't really censor pages that have millions and millions of followers because people will notice, right? But what's happening is, although this photo op apology tour occurred, at the base level, base, everyday Facebook users just saw a photo op. They didn't see anything change in their day-to-day -day life. My friends, I, I had my followers on Facebook send me things that they had banned, been banned and censored for, and almost all of them had something that they had been Absolutely. banned and censored and, for. Absolutely, and there's the answer. Let's talk about solutions. I think everybody should send you, Drudge, myself, everybody. We should make this a big news story, which we've already done. Uh, you know, it's been Drudge and Infowars and others that have forced this you know, debate out there because we know the censorship was intensifying. We've been beating the drum for six months. Everybody, send your screenshots, send what they told you to us, even if it was six months ago, a year ago. We're going to create whole histories and do what the Senate probably isn't really doing and show the court of public opinion. No, this is organized censorship for good, wholesome Americana ideas. When the kill, uh, last time I checked, it's been up there for three months, the kill Donald Trump page organizing his assassination with tens of thousands of likes is still on Facebook. So we've got to all stand up against this, speak out against it, and not let them normalize it. What else, Lauren, do you think we should do uh, to help uh, resist this and respond to this? Well, yeah, first of all, exposing it. What, that was the solution to getting my account back, was exposing it and embarrassing Facebook because they are embarrassed because restricting free speech is something embarrassing to do. So they are being subversive about it and sneaky about it. And when you have, like you said, they've got a page that says, 
Mary should have aborted Jesus up right now and they'll ban anti-Mohammed pages. This is clear hypocrisy that needs to be exposed. The other thing that uh, I've been doing is I just had Syrian girl talk to me recently and she's banned for 30 days for posting an anti-ISIS joke on Facebook and she lost her account for 30 days. And I gave her the email of the woman who apologized to me and told her to email this woman and say, give me my account back because I was wrongly banned. I think I might just publicly publish this woman's email so that everyone who has bans can email her. We need to fight back. We need to not take this anymore because it is going to get worse if we don't. Exactly, they're trying to create a normalcy bias so that we just think it's normal that there's mobile execution vans in China in every major city killing up to 20 people a day and selling their organs. I mean, that's been real news for 20 years. It's just no big deal now. Well, they want to normalize that, oh, yeah, you uh, were against Benghazi. You sent a Washington Post link out. We don't want that spreading. We're going to kill it. You know, it's, 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 it's the credible stuff they don't like. When somebody does a good job at the New York Times and then Drudge links to it, that's what they're killing. We have lists of the stuff they've killed. They're really scared, not even so much of Alex Jones or Laura Southern. They're scared of journalists finally bucking the system getting stuff out there, and then the whole facade collapses. They've now reached their Ceausescu Romanian you know, moment when the dictator has no clothes. When, when, when the Associated Press does their biggest poll ever of educated readers, and 6% trust the mainstream media. I mean, uh, so, so they know they've already collapsed. They just want to keep the facade up so the public doesn't figure that that's happened yet, so we all still feel like we're alone. Well, if everything InfoWars puts out, ends up being number one on Google, like it used to be for years. I mean, they had to they changed their algorithm to block our Google bomb, where we would tell people, go put this in a search engine, we'd make it the top. Well, that's that's people power. That's not rigging the system. It's a lot fairer than what they do, just having you know orders come down, hey, make this the top trend, and then folks don't even know they got paid you know, $20, $30 million for two days to make, say, a type of tennis shoe, which I know happened from insiders. This is how they make their money, the trend. They're creating a fake culture, they're making money out of it and screwing over the free market economy, not telling people it's advertising. Now they're coming for our speech itself and our political ideas because we are the zeitgeist. We are the future. We are liberty. What's your view on that? I've lost her audio. Do we have Lauren's audio? It died. Well, we had a lot of Skype issues late. We have the most expensive, fancy Skype system and regular Skype system as well. We go on backups and... Um, we were starting to go more and more to phone back up when folks are on with us via Skype, but uh, we will uh, try to get her back on because this is such an exciting time to be alive. This is such an amazing time. Have her go to telephone. I don't want to. She can stay on hello, video. Hello? Oh, good. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Uh, you heard my rant. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, absolutely. The day I'll start trusting Facebook again is when we see Facebook censorship at the top of the trending section. But we won't because these companies are only hiring young liberals. They're so obsessed with diversity of gender, with diversity of race. What about diversity of thought? Why not hire some conservatives to be moderators? Why not hire some uh, libertarians to work on what's trending? But no, no, you've got only liberals and they've got a sure. culture created there. And yeah, no, I agree with you that they want us to shut up and it's these young millennials that are working there it's obviously the establishment that have influenced them and are continuing to influence them well, sure facebook them. admitted that they made black lives matter a horrible uh you know organization uh funded by george soros to create destabilization not to reform police they made that the trend and you just what you said is so important the nazis at nuremberg as you know claimed oh low-level nazis killed people in mass and had death camps and slave labor we didn't know and, they, and then low level said we were just following orders. The truth is they hire these people, they have their bio, they have their algorithm, they have their posts from Facebook, they know that they wanna censor people and are social justice warriors. They're teaching on colleges that censorship is good and you know ban uh, costume parties. These are horrible authoritarians. And then they put them in there and claim, oh, we, don't, we didn't know they were doing this. I mean, that is exactly what the Maoists did with their youth brigades. Well, they're saying they're rogue and that this is human error. Well, the error is only happening to one side of the political spectrum. These errors are only happening to conservatives. What I would like Facebook to say or admit is have they fired a single person that has been rogue banning conservatives? 
I bet the answer is no, they haven't. They are just going to go on their apology tour and continue doing what they are doing well and hoping that the press shuts up about it. But I know you won't. I know uh, I'm hoping that other media stations won't. I won't shut up about it. So they got a fight coming for them if they think that they can keep doing this. Absolutely. And Trump should start doing Facebook mentions himself every day. It'll be number one to, to, to see if they'll censor him and make it all about the censorship. Because here's the good news. I've always said resistance is victory, a, a, a military term that I coined. And it's simple. If you just keep resisting, it doesn't matter the invader will finally fall. History shows that. Resistance is victory. You get stronger, you get smarter, you never give up, you never buy the propaganda. The more they censor, the more they show how desperate they are. We just have to not get worn out by it and realize six months ago we knew this was going on. They said it isn't happening. We forced it out in the open. It's a victory. It's a victory. So thank God you didn't just roll over and start self-censoring, hoping you could keep your Facebook and, and, and you know, tone yourself down, which is pretty, you know, well, you know, Good reporting. Yeah. I mean, the stuff you do is it, it, is absolutely you know pro freedom, uh, very well done. Just good reporting, very entertaining. I mean, how dare them try to censor you? But they leave up stuff about killing Donald Trump. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, they they were trying. They started with trying to embarrass us. They started with trying to embarrass us by saying we were making conspiracies. They tried to embarrass us by saying we were faking. I had liberals tweeting me saying that I was tending to band. And now we just keep coming out and finding that we are right about it. Every single thing people were saying months ago that the trending section was being manipulated and Facebook wouldn't admit it. It took a employee that an ex employee to come out and leak it. People were saying the moderators were biased and Facebook wouldn't admit it. They were calling us conspiracy theorists saying we were crazy. And then we found out they've got rogue employees. So they're going to try to embarrass us. They're going wow. to try and wear us out and I mean, you're going to deal with a lot of that in life when you're speaking the truth is radical today where everything is lies. So you're going to have to deal with a lot of that today. Laura, you're amazing. I would love it whenever you are. I mean, I'm, I would love to have you if you want to come do some reporting for us at the DNC or RNC and work with Leanne McAdoo and the rest of the crew. I know I'm serious because we're about to hire more reporters and I'd like even if they're freelance or, you know, work for us four or five times a year for certain projects, uh, go to Bilderberg, go to Davos, cover stuff for us because you're smart, you know what's going on, you're tenacious, uh, but you're also a lady. And, and, and so I hope you'll be working with InfoWars more in the future because I want to stand together. But what you just said is so paramount. In the 1984 system, telling the truth is a revolutionary act and that's why they're coming after you that's why they're trying to shut you up. And we just have to understand that they call us conspiracy theorists. They would have urban warfare drills in the towns I lived in. It'd be in the local paper. I'd cover it on syndicated radio. And they'd have major papers say it didn't happen. I was a conspiracy theorist when it was in the local paper and I had video. So exactly now you're experiencing it. You're being censored. And they say you're a conspiracy theorist. Again, folks, I'm talking over because her, her Skype uh, has been going out. We're going to get her back up to say bye. But, but it is just such an amazing time to be alive. It's the animating contest of liberty. She didn't shut up. She didn't back off. Most people do. And I've had folks in Facebook say, hey, be nice. We'll let you be successful. And I go, is that from Facebook? They're kind of like, yeah, would you like to be able to go meet with Facebook? See, quite frankly, it's kind of like, you want to, there's a meeting in New York. You want to go? That happened this week. But that's private, and I'm not going to go there. The point is, is that I, if I say something's in confidence, I don't go there. But believe me, I could be right where Glenn Beck is and more. Okay, they want to get me in the fold. I'm not doing it. Okay, I'm not stupid. I don't want to preside over the death of the freaking First Amendment. Excuse me. Lauren Southern, you are amazing. The final thing I want to say, I'll give you the floor here, is thanks for letting me talk over. I get so excited. Uh, the rebel.media, the rebel.media. The number one thing is what Matt Drudge says. He's probably you know, saying this right now. And he re reposted his interview with us up there saying it. Get away from Facebook. Use it to point at yourself. Use it to point out that we know we won't have it forever. Use it to expose it. But we need to promote our own media, our own outfits, our own system. And folks need to value it or we're going to lose it. Where else can people follow you? They can follow me at my Twitter, at Lauren underscore Southern, my Facebook page. If you just look at my name, you'll find it. And, of course, the Rebel Media, uh, which we're trying to emulate uh, independent media in Canada like there is in the States with yourself and Breitbart and other independent media sources. Thank you so much for having me on, Alex. You bet. I am just so excited by the victories we're having. I mean, I think we're having major victories forcing this out in the open.
Do you think Facebook's going to back off or just continue this, Lauren? I think they'll continue it as long as they are allowed to. I think they will continue it until uh, they hope we give up. But uh, like you said, we won't, and it's all about resistance. All right. Well, great job, Lauren Southern. We really appreciate your work. God bless you. All right, we're going to be back with the consummate Clinton insider who predicted the Vince Foster stuff was coming out this week and more coming out next week, Larry Nichols. And notice, I promote Breitbart, I promote World Net Daily, Daily Caller, everybody. We're all in this together for free speech. I'd support Michael Moore if they were censoring him. I mean, it's all about free speech, folks. Come on, it's America. On the march. I tell you, uh, talk about pearls before swine. We are not just throwing out garbage here. And I know most of our audience are amazing people and, and, and they appreciate it. But I tell you, Somebody like Roger Stone coming on next hour knows what he's talking about, and he's not giving you baloney. And somebody like Larry Nichols, he said last week, you go, watch, next two weeks, you're going to see the Vince Foster information. You're going to see new information. The whole Secret Service report, not just the one that one page got put out in the media. We're going to be putting that on screen here in a few minutes with Larry Nichols. But Trump is coming out on the Vince Foster murder. Drudge is linking to it. It has got the system scared. He's talking about rape, as you know, putting out campaign ads about Juanita Broderick and others. We're playing some of those this hour. This is important. Before I go any further, we're talking about censorship. We're in an information war. The Internet is the fastest place to reach the most people, and you should do it on comment boards, on major newspaper sites. You should do it on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google. You should just be every day doing something. The biggest thing to stop their censorship is to use your free speech, use these platforms, and never let them start ratcheting it down like the communist Chinese have done. They've been controlling it from the beginning. That's how they've been successful. Somewhat. As the Washington Post reports, they're not going to do it here. They're not going to win because we're not going to let them. Same thing in Europe. They steal elections, just get even more hardcore in Austria. They try to shut down your free speech, more people get in the streets. They've had to back off. And it's the same thing here. Everybody's got to go to InfoWarsStore.com and get a Hillary for President t-shirt. We've got three different designs up there. Or Molon Lambe, or come and take it. To meet other patriots. To go out to rallies and show the solidarity. And to exercise free speech and to get used to doing it. To get out of your comfort zone and make it comfortable to be engaged until you become addicted. Until there's not even any fear now there's only the fiery addiction of telling the truth and taking on the enemy. Because I'm telling you, the fear of you have it, the trepidation, some of you maybe, and I get it. It goes away the more you take action. And a lot of you great activists, hey, you're the people that care about freedom. Redouble your efforts. Start organizations. Become an even bigger leader. Take action. This is the season of awakening. They want to bring in a collectivist revolution because they know there is a revolution of restoration, an awakening happen. This is the empire, the global is striking back. Also, we're going to end this special uh, this weekend. One of the biggest specials we've ever done on Survival Shield Nation I-9X2, 20% off. Folks, I, I, go watch the informational videos, read about it. Not just the thyroid, but other glands are starving for the good halogen that they used to metabolically produce hormones and other things your body needs. This is this is true juice of the body. This is the oil the body needs instead of the bad halogens, the fluoride, the bromine, the chlorine, and, and all the others that our bodies are hammered with. This blocks them. This fills the glands. This helps push the others out of the body. It's amazing. Consult a physician before you take it. It's generally seen as safe, but the point is, is that some people might have other issues. See, talk to your physician. because This is serious. This is, this, is, this is Mother Nature's medicine, uh, and it's amazing. Survival Shield Nation I9 X2, helping fund the operation, so it's a total win. We have the vitamin mineral fusion, uh, all the vitamins, all the minerals, the amino acids, all of it together uh, in one uh, product. Uh, totally natural, totally delicious, uh, and just f uh, gives you the minerals you need so you can actually absorb them and the vitamins. InfoWarsLife.com takes you right to the nutraceutical vitamin uh, supplement section. InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWarsStore.com is the umbrella shopping cart. It's the big store. InfoWarsLife.com is the aisle. If you want to go directly to the Made in America apparel aisle at InfoWarsStore.com, go to MadeIn1776.com. Or just go to InfoWarsStore.com. Look at the big nav bar, whether it's organic, non-GMO coffee, organic, non-GMO seeds, the lowest price, super high quality, high spectrum, biggest selection, uh, whether it's the best water filters that cut out the glyphosates and 
uh, all the other poisons and fluoride and garbage. You're crazy, in my view, if you're not using a ProPure or an Alexa Pure system and, 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 and the shower filters that we sell that are the best and the lowest price. I mean, we really give you dynamite deals. And I talk to my accountants and folks, they go, you might not want to discount stuff so much. You might not want to be beating Amazon on a lot of stuff and just have the appeal to your audience, buy from us to support us. And I just, I just can't help myself. A lot of our stuff's lower than Amazon. A lot of stuff on Amazon is, as they admit, is kind of faulty or other third-party sellers are selling it. You know, there's a lot of issues there. Uh, we try to really, we sell stuff on Amazon too, but we try to sell you the very best, newest, high-quality, storable foods, lowest prices, super high-quality, InfoWarsStore.com. InfoWarsSelect.com takes you right to the aisle that has the storable foods. But InfoWarsStore.com is the umbrella site. And we are funded directly by you. We just go right around the advertisement so we can't be controlled. I'm going to bring some advertisement back just because uh, I need to sustain things. The economy's falling apart, and I can see ahead that uh, I, need to, I need to capitalize. I need more money. I need more fuel. I need more people. I need to not contract. I need to expand. And I am looking. We've grown some and having to contract a little bit. Uh, if uh, I don't start plugging two or three times an hour. What I do is I plug maybe once every hour or two, and I do like a five-minute plug. I need to do a couple little short ones an hour. I need you to support us. I want to thank you for supporting us. We got stuff you really need. And when you shop with the good guys, it funds the tip of the spear. Everybody says the tip of the spear, baby, we're it. And I don't particularly like that, by the way, but it's my duty, and I'm going to do it. I'm in so deep, there's no turning back. It's actually a liberating feeling. So InfoWarsShore.com. Now, Larry Nichols is is... Former Green Beret, Special Ops, uh, working for the CIA, you name it, obviously. He's not supposed to get into all that. And then uh, went to basically uh, interface with the Dixie Mafia that runs the South. Uh, the, the Dixie Mafia is the shadow government. It's mainly Democrats. Democrats here in town are Dixie Mafia. But, uh, you know, they run the show. And then when uh, the Clintons started killing kids and stuff, he said, look, I'm not going to be part of killing 13-year-old kids and see drug shipments. I'm just, we're not doing it. There's no reason to kill those kids. And so he went out against him, and the rest is history. Uh, and most folks don't know who he is because it's been 20 years since the whole Clinton thing. It's good that Trump's bringing all this back up. And Nichols told us here on the show, what, what day was Nichols on? He, he told us last week that this would be coming out in the next two weeks. Well, it has come out. Trump in the Washington Post, everywhere else, saying, hey, Vince Foster, very mysterious. He's being investigated. He's talking about the rapes. All of it is happening. And Nichols says more is about to come out. Here to drop that bombshell is Larry Nichols, a man who has incredible courage. And he took photos of the black government SUV pulling up in his yard, pulling out in the rural area. And then the cops came and told him, what are they doing? And they said, we're feds, Homeland Security. You can't get, you know, get out of here. They wanted our viewers, everybody else to know, we're on you. When we were talking about the Supreme Court Justice, Scalia. I mean, this is a very serious time, folks. The enemy's moving. Censorship is moving. I've never seen such movement, and it, 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 it gives me uh, goosebumps. But not a fear. I'm actually just exhilarated, though. I mean, I feel like the fight's here now. I, mean, I feel crazed, quite frankly. Uh, God bless you, my friend. I hope you're doing okay. I know you can't even be on uh, video Skype with us, but uh, we're, we're praying for you. Uh, Nichols Live at AOL.com uh, is your PayPal. Folks, need to support you. I know you're battling cancer, my friend. And, uh, but we'll talk about that at the end of the interview. Thank you, Mr. Nichols, for coming on. You bet, Alex, and thank you, buddy. And and let me say, I know we need to talk about Foster, but folks, you better be prepared. You better be prepared because we are at the beginning of the beginning of the end of this silent coup. Alex, it's now or never. We're going to come out of this either the nation we were or the nation we never wanted to be. But it's now, and it's on us. And people have got to use you. I hate to say it that way, but they've got to use InfoWars as a medium. You know, I respect more than you can know, because you know I understand the little talk show world, but I respect you for bringing people from other media sources in without being jealous. You know, folks, this is no time for everybody to divide up and this group go their way, this group look. This, we've got to communicate and get the word out. And I would tell everybody, get on Alex's email list. You will learn very soon why that's important. You will learn. It's coming. I'm sorry, Alex, I didn't mean to blurt in. You've got the floor. I mean, uh, let's get into all of it. Well, all right, let's get into all of it. 
let me tell you something. You see today, Trump brings out Vince Foster. And here we go. <clears throat> here we go. Here they go. Anybody that believes Vince Foster's death was suspicious is a nutcase. Well, folks, let me tell you about that. Once Hillary clears the Democratic nomination, then about every week, Alex, I will be right here with you if you will allow me to. And I will share stuff that nobody has known over these 20 years plus about the death of Vince Foster. Well, please don't wait. Let's start doing it right now because I don't want a head squad coming down here. I well, mean. then let's start with the first thing that ought to make this a bit suspicious. The official story of Foster's death is that he parked his car at Fort Marcy Park, walked some 200 yards in, in the hot sun on a dirt trail, went to a berm by a cannon, Civil War cannon, sat down and shot himself in the mouth and blew the crown of his skull off. Well, that's the official story. However, Alex has, and I think you're going to put it on the screen, something I came up with, which was the actual Secret Service memo. Now, folks, this is in the House. This is in congressional records. This is there. So when you start talking about us being nutcakes, let's deal with this piece of information right here. When the, when the park police notified the Secret Service at the White House of the death of Vincent Foster, this is the actual memo they gave them. Now, what is significant about this memo is it says the body of Vincent Foster was found in his car in the parking lot at Fort Marcy Park. And it went on to describe six pack bottle of James was in the front seat with him. One he had drank, the others had not been opened yet. It mentioned the fact that the 38 revolver was there in the car with him. It mentioned the fact that the magic briefcase was in the back seat and it was empty. I say the magic briefcase because there it was in the back seat empty. Three days later, it was supposedly found in his office when they investigated his office and they inspected it. It was empty. And then guess what? We raised so much cane. You'll remember, Alex, you and I and others about the fact that there was no suicide note that three or four days after that, in comes Hillary's people into Foster's office. They refined the briefcase, simply turn it upside down and out falls the torn up suicide note. So yeah, let's start there. When you want to discredit this story as being over, and anybody that has question about it, uh, your nutcases, right? Well, let's start there. Right out of the chute, did he die on the berm by the cannon, or did he die in his car? Now, Alex, I don't know about you, but I don't believe that's a typo. You know, I could understand with all the... We've got him cleaning his office out and the, all of it. I mean, a lot of folks know the story. A lot of our audience is informed. For me, and I want to go back over it, you said this was coming out in the next few weeks. You were correct. I know you have a lot of sources. What else is coming out and what do you think of Trump? I mean, he's got more and more courage. I got to tell you, I really admire him. Well, he does. What I worry is Trump... I don't want Trump, as he goes and tries to coalesce the Republican Party around him, I don't want him to buy into all of the junk they're going to try to tell him. Just today, this morning, I saw pundit after pundit from the RNC saying that Trump shouldn't deal with this issue. He needs to deal with the economy. Look, this if, if you know the Clintons as I do. The only way to beat him is going after him. You bet. They're going to come after Trump. They're not going. They're going to spend 70, 60 to seventy percent of their campaign one billion dollars on trashing Donald Trump. They want him to lower his defenses. Yep. Now, if you can be restricted, Donald Trump, from what you can say back about the Clintons, then you're beat. Don't well, uh, let me just tell you, he's now, he's now the. I mean, folks are excited. He's going with the advice because it's his own view. The gloves are off. Well, he needs to keep the gloves off, and I'll tell you something else that's going to come out in the next week. Something's going to come out about the death of Vince Foster having to do with the fact that, that there was no blood found at the scene. There were his skull, 
obviously, I'm going to be gross, but anyway, because of the wound, there should have been bullet, a bullet and pieces of skull laying at the crime scene, yet they found Sure, his no brains blood. weren't blown out there. He'd been moved there. That's and right. we're going to talk about that. Obviously, Trump's talking to the Inquirer, too. You've been talking to him. So he knows mm -hmm. it's coming out next week. He wants to be, he loves to be shown to be right. So he obviously understands this big expose is coming out, too. Everything Trump says, I assure you, there will be a collateral story that comes out to support what he says. And it will be true. It will be backed up. And what's neat about this, Alex, people can discredit me. That's fine. Call me in that case. That's fine. What is coming out about Vince Foster are the true relative facts from the investigation, not from me. For example, soon to come out will be the actual autopsy report, Alex. Now you tell me, how does a man walk 200 yards in 90 plus degree temperature on a dirt trail, get to the site, sit down, and let me ask you this, how do you do that and not have one microscopic speck of dust on your shoes, socks, or pants? How? You roll them up in the carpet. <laughs> well, there's the other part. What he did have on his pants were long, shag, multicolor carpet fibers. And that was all over it. Now, the thing that people did not know until your next guest, I believe, is the one that brought it out. I was going to, but I was going to wait, and they went ahead and brought it out. The fact that, guess what, guys? There was another entrance to that part. The big thing has always been, Alex, if they rolled the man up in a carpet from the actual place that he died. Now, let's get this clear, Alex. Please make this very clear about me. I have never said he was murdered. I've never said he killed himself. Whichever way it went, I can't prove. But I can and will prove that they moved the body. All right, you got it? That I can prove. They There's a cover-up going on, so we don't know what it is, but that's good for an open investigation with the death. If they're proven to be lying about the story, it's all opened back up again, and we're on the verge of that. The Clintons thought they would just have their past not looked at, but Donald Trump is willing to do it, and Larry Nichols is willing to do it. And Matt Drudge and the American people and others are willing to do it. We'll be back with Larry Nichols and Roger Stone's coming on. Roger Stone's coming up at like five after we've got our guest for two more little segments. I appreciate him coming on on short notice. Larry Nichols. By the way, uh, Larry had a very successful job in the Arkansas development firm, was doing you know, really great. He left the Clintons, that's on record, and began whistleblowing on them and all these books. And uh, Whitewater came out after it and, and everything. And so we owe him a debt of gratitude for that. He's been battling cancer. He doesn't ask for this, but I know that he's been unable to even do the show sometimes. He's been in the hospital, and we've been up there. We've sent him some money. Uh, he's basically almost lost everything he's got. It's very important for folks. It's a 20-plus year battle with the Clintons. Uh, to, if you can, send him a few bucks uh, so he can try to get the best medical care he can to keep getting this info out to the media and hopefully get better. But he just wants to make it through the election. We're praying for him. So we'll put up on screen right now. Uh, Larry Nichols, 58 Kingsington, K-E-N-S-I-N-G-T-O-N Drive, Conway, Arkansas, 72034. Or the most easy way to do it is Nichols Live at AOL.com. Uh, there it is, PayPal. All right, uh, going back to Mr. Nichols. Uh, Larry, it's a big deal Trump's doing this, obviously. Uh, more's coming out on Foster. Um, it's really scaring him. What do you think the Clintons are doing right now what do you think is going through their mind? Their Facebook censoring has been caught. Uh, they're getting caught on so many fronts. Seems like everything they do is turn into, you know, turn into horse manure, but still they're in power. What, what do you expect? I mean, what's going on inside their camp right now uh, from all your years of working with them? They're going into a full damage control mode. You know, there's something going on. Well, first off, let me finish, and I'll let you talk with Roger, your next guest, about it. But there's something that's always been out there that's helped them discredit the story of him being rolled up in carpet, folks. And that is that, you know, nobody could carry a man rolled up in carpet into 200 yards into the park and not be seen. Well, guess what? There was another way to get into the park. There was another entrance, and you need to go over that with Roger. Now, <clears throat> what they're doing is they're getting full ready. But there's a story that has come out today that next week, if you will allow me, we'll get into when we have a little more time. And it's about Terry McAuliffe and the money he got from this uh, Wang, this guy, this Chinese guy. 
Well, they don't want the story that you and I are going to talk about to come out. That's what's scaring them about it. And it has to do with a guy named, a Chinese guy named Charlie Tree. Charlie Tree was a restaurant owner in Arkansas when Clinton was governor. When Clinton was elected president, he went to Washington with him. He was in, Alex, if you can believe this, on top secret security meetings with the president and his staff. And I caught him going across the street after these meetings to the Stevens investment firm office, and he sent faxes to the Chinese government, relaying the information that was talked about in these security meetings. Now, Clinton and them don't want that coming out. And this whole thing with Wang is going to be the beginning of bringing that out. And I hope Trump's listening because he needs to delve into that. Now, Tree was eventually, because of the work we did to get it known, he was eventually prosecuted to some degree, but it was over $600,000 in campaign contributions from a foreign government. Sure, and Obama, was it was famous C-SPAN footage where he would just have all the Chinese leaders and generals in and plain clothes around the table right. and just sell stuff off. Well, remember, I was in California speaking at an engagement, and there in the hotel was none other than Al Gore meeting with a Chinese general getting an envelope full of money, and I took the picture of it, and it was released. Yeah, this stuff's coming out. Well, you're Clinton an amazing you're, you're an amazing operative. They certainly hate not having you on their side. I know you probably got to go, but Stone isn't coming on for five minutes. Do five more with us if you can. Punch out if you yeah. have. Okay, good. We'll be back to talk more about that because people are about to learn about the communist generals, the missile secrets, the MERV technology. Stay with us. Third hour straight ahead. Roger Stone's popping in, too. Thank you. For they call Richard Snowden the traitor. He's now been proven right that he did go and try to, and others went and tried to leak info. Pardon me, just popped my ear, CJ. Ed, Ed, Edward Snowden, yeah, I, uh, I, uh, couldn't hear him. Uh, I'm teleprompter free here. The point is, um, Edward Snowden, of course, has been proven correct when he said, look, other whistleblowers went through and then they got persecuted when they went through Congress or went through the attorney general's office. Well, they call him a traitor. The Clintons on record gave missile secrets, reentry secrets so that the Chinese missiles could get off the ground, get into orbit and hit the United States or Europe. And nobody got in trouble because Ken Starr, went after sex and stuff, and now Ken Starr is a big Clinton worshiper. He always was. Let's go back to Larry Nichols of Moral of What's Coming Out and the chi -Com connection to the Clintons. Larry? Well, you know, Alex, one thing people need to understand, because of Bill Clinton and the work he did with the communist Chinese, and I repeat, communist Chinese government, you may not know this, folks, but our most sophisticated jet fighter, the F-18, fly-by-wire, the computer, the onboard computer that controls that jet was turned over during Bill Clinton's administration. He was given, he gave to the Chinese the rights to manufacture that computer. Now, Alex, I got to ask you, with the potential of China becoming an enemy of this country, if they're not already, I'm talking about really, then you tell me, do you believe they don't? They didn't build a back door into those computers, into our jets? Do you not believe that they can push a button and every one of our jets are disengaged? Bill Clinton did that. That's Why? how we've been set up. And by the way, I know the guy that helped design that computer, the head of the project, Mike Judge, who went on to yep. do all the big TV shows. But uh, that's just amazing. <laughs> it is. And then when you deal with North Korea, North Korea, do you know where they got the mini miniaturization technology? to be able to put a nuke, to miniaturize a nuke. Now, they haven't built a missile yet to carry it, but the miniaturization system they got from the Clinton administration. They allowed Laurel and Hughes to transfer the reentry devices as well. They did indeed. So, folks, when you think of the Clintons, I'm not here just talking about girly issues. Hey, guys, the girly issues was just a vehicle I had to use in that day and time to cut through the media and get something to get it out. The girl stuff was nothing. Yes, he was a womanizer. Yes, he was a sexual deviant. Yes, he did those things to Kathleen and, and uh, what's your name, uh, Broderick. Yes, he did. 
And, you know, it's kind of funny right now. You've got what's the comedian's name, Ben. Uh, he's going to have to go to trial. Bill Cosby. Sex, Cosby for molesting, you know, these women. Well, what do you think Clinton did? But instead of going on trial, they're running for president. And if you think, well, let's separate Hillary from Bill. That was all Bill. No, no, folks. Hillary ran. This is coming out in the inquiry. I know that sounds crazy, but it's coming out in the inquiry. Hillary led the bimbo eruption. Well, she's on record that she hot showed that. You, you and others proved it. Now it's just all coming back, and they don't want it to be discussed. And Donald Trump and everybody else isn't shutting up. Our audience isn't shutting up. And they can't stop us all in, in 60 seconds. How do you expect they'll strike back? I'm afraid they'll kill Trump. I don't think they will start out killing him. They still have the power of the media, Alex, and they're going to hit. Remember, they're not bound with the media by the truth. We are. I mean, we have to be able to verify what we say, and they, they still say we're nuts and crazy. But they're not bound by that. So they can make allegation after allegation against Trump, whether it be true or not, most of it not. And they will have billions of dollars in free media spreading the word. They're going to start out destroying Trump. Now, before I go, folks, I don't know what the name of it is with your company, Alex, but they better get your storable foods now. Well, I know the economy's in trouble, and I know I'm getting more prepared, and that's what helps fund our operations, so it's a win-win. You can't lose. It's insurance you can eat. InfoWars Select, InfoWarsSelect.com. Thank you, Larry. We'll talk to you again next week as this unfolds. God bless. Roger Stone, straight ahead. They're intentionally leaving the borders open in Europe, bringing in mass refugees. Among them are going to be jihadists who are setting up a future Tet offensive, Tet-style offensive, in Europe, and the same thing's being done to this country. On her way to work one morning, down the path along the lake, a tender-hearted woman saw a poor, half-frozen snake. His pretty colored skin had been all frosted with the dew. Oh well, she cried, I'll take you in, and I'll take care of you. Take me in, oh tender woman, take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. Now she clutched him to her bosom. You're so beautiful, she cried. But if I hadn't brought you in by now, you might have died. She stroked his pretty skin, and then she kissed and held him tight. But instead of saying thank you, that snake gave her a vicious bite. I saved you, cried the woman, and you've bit me, heavens why. You know your bite is poisonous, and now I'm going to die. Oh, shut up, silly woman said the reptile with a grin you knew damn well i was a snake before you took me in from the front lines of the information war it's alex jones ladies and gentlemen for the next 40 minutes or so roger stone who the new york times has done a cover story uh, on we're gonna be breaking some of that down is joining us to talk about campaign 2016. Since Trump has defended himself when they made a bunch of lies about him in the New York Times a few weeks ago and come out against the Clintons for the reports of rape and settling those uh, charges, and since he's come out and now talked about Vince Foster, the Clintons' numbers are collapsing multi-points every week with Trump now going way into the lead, and that's even with polls that I think are being spun. The, the, the power structure is literally soiling itself right now. So I want to talk about that with Mr. Stone and, 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 and see how much he can you know, get into in all this uh, and briefing you without giving up too much inside strategy. But it's very, very exciting. And it is pure populism. This is the collapse of the establishment media, the collapse of their disinformation, the collapse of their ability to sell hoaxes. This is a very important time in American history, and Donald Trump will be the next president of the United States if they don't assassinate him 
uh, or something else like that happens, or they don't just openly steal the election. The Democrats are in panic. Uh, Clinton says, just sit back and relax. I guess like he'd say when he would rape women. Uh, that's in the news. This is, I, I cannot tell you what an incredible time it is to be alive. We've at least found our fighting spirit. The sleeping giant is awakening. Now, I want to talk about strategy, the latest, what's coming with Mr. Stone. Then I'm going to get tough with him. I respect him, and he always gives us straight answers. But sometimes, you know, he 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 he, he just says, "I'm not going to comment." He either tells us the truth or he doesn't comment. I want to know because meeting with Kissinger, I get he says he meet with Kim Jong Un. I mean, he meet with anybody powerful and prominent. But as long as he doesn't agree with them, like Haas a few months ago, and then Haas came out and attacked him a week later. The head of the CFR, that's a good sign. I'm seeing nationalism. I'm seeing him go up against political correctness. I'm seeing him expose the crimes of the Clintons. I'm seeing him double down on the Second Amendment. So I'm seeing everything I want when it comes to policies and rhetoric. Um, I've met with globalists. I've met with people before, off record as a journalist. And then as long as what they're doing isn't criminal, I don't break that confidence. That's how you learn things. But VP for me, and I'm going to ask Mr. Stone this, I think it's the litmus test. And I'm really upset about Newt Gingrich cozying up the globalists and all the rest of it. Even if he says nice things about Trump. That guy is hooked in with the globalists big time. I think they try to assassinate Trump, quite frankly. Uh, if they put someone in like Gingrich, I mean, I'm serious. We saw what they did with Reagan. He's another George Herbert Walker Bush, in my view. So who are we looking at? Who are some of the people? And does Stone agree with that? He joins us now. I'm going to try to shut up and give him the floor to cover the waterfront. Roger Stone of thestonezone.com. You notice his The Clinton's War on Women by Skyhorse, a bestseller. We sell it in fullwarsstore.com. You can get it at stonezone.com or Amazon or bookstores everywhere. Notice this is kind of a blueprint now. Uh, we had Larry Nichols on, who released a lot of this 20-something years ago, saying Stone's the man to talk to. The Inquirer's coming out next week. So we're really seeing the response to the Clinton's dastardly statement, uh, you know, trying to imply to the New York Times that Trump had done something wrong. Those women have said they never said any of this. Just like the hoax of the rape case, it's all bull. But you will see more hoaxes. Mr. Stone, am I right? Alex, so first of all, it's great to be back with you. Uh, and uh, as I've said many times on this program, the views expressed are strictly mine. Uh, but uh, I think you're absolutely right that uh, we are at an exciting time in American politics. We are on the cusp of taking our country back. And it has taken someone from outside the realm of politics, from outside the realm of the two-party duopoly, somebody who, in my opinion, is a giant when it comes to communications. I also agree with you that the vice presidential pick is going to be the litmus test as to whether the globalists can co-opt Donald Trump the way, in, to some extent, they co-opted Ronald Reagan. Kind of reminds me of a story that um, that uh, from the 1980 campaign when uh, Ronald Reagan had clinched the Republican nomination uh, and we were headed out to Greenwich, Connecticut for a campaign event. But before we did the event, Reagan had a private off the record sit down with Henry Kissinger. Now, uh, Kissinger had opposed Reagan's nomination. Kissinger was not a Reagan fan, but more importantly, Reagan was not a fan of detente. Reagan believed that we had to overpower uh, and shut the Soviet Union's war machine down rather than coexist with it. So the men never agreed. They met privately. I was obviously not in the room. It was just uh, Governor Reagan. Dr. Kissinger, uh, when he emerged from the meeting 45 minutes later and he got back in the car, uh, I said, well, Governor, how was your meeting with Dr. Kissinger? He just shook his head and he said, God, the guy smelled like garlic. It was awful. So uh, wow. I think you have a very analogous situation here. I've known Trump 30 years. His ideas, whether it is NATO or whether it is our fiscal situation or if it is, or it is our ridiculous trade policy, these are, are hard-formed personal views that no one is going to change. Not Dr. Kissinger, not the Council on Foreign Relations, not the elites of the Republican Party. So when it comes to the question of the vice presidency, I must tell you, I put my complete and total faith in Donald J. Trump. Uh, you're going to hear names on the short list here that, in my opinion, are probably not really under consideration. Names put there for the point of Party unity, names put there uh, to create uh, a smokescreen so that Mr. Trump can have some suspense at the convention. But I would predict this. The nominee will be a nationalist, not a globalist. The nominee will be somebody who shares Donald Trump's views 
on a broad cross-section of issues. Now, he has, as you know, thrown out some names and talked about a short list and a vetting process. Uh, but at the end of the day, there's only one man on the planet who knows what Trump is going to do, and that's Trump. Uh, this process is not being managed by his campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski. Uh, it is not being managed by the very able lawyer that he's brought in to assist in the vetting, A.B. Culver House, who I know well from the Reagan administration, a good man, a patriot. Uh, but at the end of the day, only one man's going to make this choice, and I put my full faith in Donald Trump. That's exciting. It's also common sense. If he's a nationalist, uh, peace through strength, a patriot, a constitutionalist, and a free marketer, Trump is going to end up picking somebody that's similar to him or almost exactly like him because he doesn't really like to, you know, to compromise on base values. That makes a lot of sense. And, uh, you know, I, I've heard from some other little birds and things, the same thing that you talked about with me this morning. Nothing secret you told me or anything, but that... Uh, that uh, there's some folks that are excited that there's a very short list and they're all pretty darn good. Yeah, I mean, he look, he met with Senator Corker yesterday. Um, I, I don't know that that has any particular significance. My understanding was that Corker asked for the meeting. Um, he is the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. As you know, he was uh, very warm about Donald Trump's foreign policy speech several weeks ago. Uh, we, there's obviously some pressure from some of the party people to take uh, uh, John Kasich uh, on the argument that he would bring you on Ohio. Just my opinion, I think that is unlikely. Never saw any chemistry between he uh, and Donald Trump. Uh, Marco Rubio, in my opinion, is not a is not a finisher in this process. Not the right man either. Uh, there is, uh, of course, some discussion of uh, of a woman. Governor uh, Suzanne Martinez uh, of New Mexico, also someone I think many people have overlooked, uh, Shelley Moore Capito from West Virginia, a very distinguished U.S. Senator, the daughter of former Governor Arch Moore, a nationalist, a fine woman, be an excellent choice. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people I think that are being looked at who may not be uh, in the newspapers, but only one man knows. So I, I just want to reassure those in your audience who see some of these globalists be, and have their names tossed around, uh, I am not, I'm not afraid. I think at the end of the day, Donald Trump will make the right choice. All I know is his actions, he's only turning up the heat on the globalists. He's doing exactly what the mainstream media tells him not to. They are acting really scared now. No, I think they're in high panic mode because uh, the multi-million dollar negative TV ads didn't work during the primaries. The uh, the hatchet job by the New York Times about uh, his behavior with women in the 70s and 80s, in my opinion, just set the standard. Now we have to review Bill Clinton's attitude and treatment of women in the 70s and 80s. Uh, and that's, a, that's an ugly, ugly story. I saw this again with uh, Chris Cuomo and, uh, and Michael Cohen. Uh, on CNN. This is not about expression. Well, Roger Stone, stay there. It's just miraculous. You write this book six months ago, and you're Trump's confidant, and now, like your book seems to be the whole attack pattern back at the Clintons. I, wow, it's amazing. Uh, the book's available at InfoWarsStore.com. Roger Stone's our guest. We'll be right back with more Inside Baseball. Roger Stone, the consummate political uh, insider from the Republican Party, the last 15 years exposing the establishment and their crimes in a really valiant way, and 40-plus year friend of Donald Trump, best-selling author, uh, and we've got a New York Times article here, as Trump and Clinton clash, this is in the front of the paper, two operatives duke it out in their shadows. And you learn a lot from this. Uh, I mean, boy, I tell you, we are inside their heads. They are panicked, as you just said earlier. I want to talk about some of these reportedly fake super PACs out there trying to, uh, you know, glom away support as well. What he expects the Clintons to do next, and since he's with us for the full hour, he said he can do that. We'll take some calls the last 15 minutes for your wild card questions. Quick questions for Roger Stone, 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. Roger, this is a short segment, so I'm going to try to uh, get right back to you. Uh, where do you want to start, this New York Times piece or j just the boldness of Trump, the courage of Trump? I mean, I'm not trying to kiss his butt here. He knows. He's a savvy guy. He's in danger. I mean, he is. I've never seen anything like this in modern politics, not bowing. Uh, this guy is a brawler. He is a street fighter. I really like what I'm seeing. 
He's in a crusade to save the country. Uh, he doesn't need the presidency to validate himself. He doesn't need the presidency to be a success. He's already a massive success. He's probably the best known uh, businessman on the planet. He's built a $10 billion plus personal fortune. So um, he's doing this not for himself, but for his country. He hasn't seen a golf course in months. Uh, he has uh, really worked extremely hard to uh, build what I think is a juggernaut. I think I may have said it on this very program. Stepping in front of the Trump movement is going to be like stepping in front of a moving freight train. Uh, this, is, this is all coming. And as you correctly point out, it's only June, essentially. And the polls are showing him either in a dead heat or slightly behind or slightly ahead of Hillary. That is unthinkable. We've been told for how many months Trump can't win. Trump's the weakest candidate. Trump will get slaughtered by Hillary. Of course, all of that is false. Um, the only thing predictable about Donald Trump is that he's entirely unpredictable. And that is what has the Clintons flummoxed. I know you don't like to talk about yourself, but I mean, the, the New York Times, everybody's figured out that you're one of the most influential people in there. Yes, we know Trump makes the final decision. We've got that. But I mean, so much of what you say and do, we, we end up seeing Trump saying it and doing like, look for him to come out against the Federal Reserve. That was a week later. I mean, countless times. I know he has his own ideas about this, criticized the Fed on his own before. But uh, I mean, he's obviously listened to you a lot. He's reading your book uh, and they figured it out. I'm kind of worried about you, my friend. What do you make of this uh, article putting you up against Brock? Well, first of all, as I've said, nobody puts words in Donald Trump's mouth. Um, I'm honored that he has uh, seen my book. Um, uh, I'm honored that he is using some of the themes, but he's very much his own man. Uh, this story was interesting. I, of course, knew David Brock in Washington when he was a conservative, when he wrote some of the groundbreaking early exposés on the corruption of the Clintons in Arkansas. He's a very charming, uh, very intelligent, very dastardly guy. Uh, he's gone over to the dark side. It's very sad. I presume he's done it for the money. Uh, and the Soros bankroll will be, always be larger than what we have to spend. But I, I think that the Clintons and their operatives like Brock are practicing uh, a strategy of suppression. That's because it worked before. It worked in the 80s. Put the pressure on CBS, NBC. We have that ABC. World Net Daily suit and got thousands of pages of documents from the Clinton Foundation. It was call anybody conspiracy theorist, shut down new media, including the left, be anti-free speech. I mean, we have these people. Yes, the problem is that the, that the toothpaste is out of the tube. No longer do the three networks and a couple major national newspapers have a monopoly on information. So therefore, if CNN doesn't cover it, uh, Infowars.com will. Uh, and you are reaching, as they are, we're probably reaching more people than they are. But you're reaching Drudges, millions. Drudges, we're reaching probably five, six million people a week that are American consistently. Tens of millions tune through it, millions worldwide. But, I mean, it's certainly challenging. I mean, we're just one piece of a larger constellation. Well, but whether it is uh, the Drudge Report or Breitbart or the Daily Caller or Infowars or Town Hall or a dozen other Pandora's sites. Pandora's box is open. That's exactly right. And not only that, but th these brave and courageous women like Juanita Broderick, someone that I admire very much, who chooses her words carefully and has only spoken out when it's important, but she has important things to say. Kathleen Willey groped in the White House by Bill Clinton when she went to him for help. Uh, Paula Jones, uh, who Bill Clinton exposed himself to and demanded oral sex in an Arkansas hotel room. These women were suppressed before. They will not be suppressed now. And there's dozens of more right behind them. Uh, they're going to have their day. They're going to have their say. Now, uh, the Clintons can choose to deny the charges or they can respond to them. Let's hear it. Uh, stay there, Roger. Your sky's breaking up just a bit. It's been crystal clear so far today. Love that new setup you've got. We'll be right back with Roger Stone in HD video. If you're an InfoWars viewer at InfoWars.com forward slash show. We're on stations across this country. They're trying to suppress this information. I know you understand that. So please spread it to everybody. They do not want this signal getting out. You are the amplifier, listeners. We are back live, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm your host, Alex Jones. And, of course, we are joined by Roger Stone, and he's going to be here with us uh, until the end of the hour. Then we have Paul Joseph Watson from London taking over. I'm not going to belabor this, but we sell things that everybody needs. Non-GMO, heirloom seeds, the lowest prices, the biggest selection you're going to find anywhere.
we got like 20 top brands now, certified, super high quality, from fruit trees down to tobacco to watermelons to squash to apples. I mean, it's just all there. You name it, we've got it. Great thing to do with your family. Great thing to do, especially if you live in a rural area, but also in the city. Great thing to get the kids involved with, you know, to just have them watch TV all day. Uh, we've got water filtration systems, the very best, seven or eight brands that are certified, tested, and cut out the glyphosates, the fluoride, all of it. One of the biggest health things you can do. Plus, it makes the water taste better. We have the best water pitchers. We have the best shower filters, four-stage filters with fast flow, uh, Pro Pure Pro Max. Uh, the Alexa Pures are excellent. Uh, we have the Survival Spring Straws, the Life Straws uh, that are uh, you know good for out in the field. Uh, we have water bottles that do it. Just all the best, highest rated and then we're one of the biggest sellers of all these products in the world because we have such low prices on them. 10% off with promo code WATER. They're already super low price. Stop drinking the garbage in the tap water or even well water. In most areas, is contaminated. And support the broadcast. Get a great deal at the same time. Your kidneys, your bladder will thank you. That stuff causes cancer that's in the water. Just look it up for yourself. The glyphosate especially just grows uh, estrogen-based tumors on record. Breast cancer is up multi-thousand percentage points. They admit it's just growing. It, 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 it they're estrogen-based tumors. You need to filter your water, folks. Infowarsstore.com. X2 is the good halogen. If you don't have it, the bad halogens fill up your glands. You don't operate right. You shut down. It's just horrible. The good halogen blocks those, fills up your thyroid, other glands. It's just been a miracle in my life the last three or four years. I've lost so much weight. I'm so much healthier. And X2 is one of the biggest reasons for that. Um, Anthroplex is basically the dry organic version of Super Male Vitality. It's a little less expensive. We've got it. Super male and female are sold out. They all blow you away. Uh, I turn into a raging maniac, quite frankly, about taking Anthroplex with Super male, but I'm already a type A personality. So just talk to your doctor before you take it. This is all legal and awful stuff, but it's real. It's not placebo. It's not games. It's not jokes. Uh, we're we're going to sell hardcore stuff, and Anthroplex is hardcore. Okay, period. So it's InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com. Sign up for the free newsletter, and you'll get all the books, uh, links, videos, e my ebooks, uh, films, special reports, and a lot of big discount promo codes sent to uh, your email. And as more censorship kicks in, it's more and more important that we be able to contact you. So infowars.com forward slash newsletter. Get free shipping on orders of $50 or more and 10% off additionally any other discounts when you also sign up for auto ship at infowarsstore.com or by calling toll free. They can help you as well. Operators are right here in the same building. 888-253-3139, 888-253-3139. They're here in the building until 7 o'clock every night. Then it's a answering service we've had for 20 years. They're excellent as well. They can take your orders. Okay, I'm done ranting, but that's how we fund this operation, and we sell products at low prices you need. Um, Roger Stone is our guest, stonezone.com. Uh, he sells the two books, uh, The uh, Bush Crime Family and, of course, uh, The Clinton's War on Women. These are now the definitive books. I'm an expert on both areas. The books go together to understand how the world works. You may think you already know all this, but you don't. Top experts have read these and say it takes it to a new level because of Stone's uh, governmental connections and others. It is amazing. Five, a perfect five-star rating uh, at InfoWarsStore.com. Now, continuing uh, with that, it's great to give to friends and family and neighbors, and we have polls out and London Guardian articles, women are turning against them. I've got another article on Infowars.com. Millennials are turning from Clinton and even Sanders to Trump. So people are really sick of the social justice warriors and do what I say or your racist garbage. And I'm telling you, the Trump phenomenon is spectacular and it's only a manifestation of the overall awakening. That's why we don't lose either way. This is exciting. Getting back to Roger Stone, uh, Roger, again, amazing times. Um, I want to get into Brock. I want to get into new attacks. But you've got the floor here for 10 minutes before we go to calls. What else is front and center? What else should we be watching? What's the next attack? You've told us months before what the new attack will be. What do you expect? What do we do? Well, I think, Alex, you just put your finger on it. Uh, I have a granddaughter who uh, is uh, in college now, and I know that she and uh, all of her friends are deeply concerned about the issue of sexual assault and rape on the campuses. I think this is a particularly sensitive issue with millennial uh, women, girls, uh, who many of whom will be voting for the first time. Uh, and I've always thought this was Hillary Clinton's greatest single vulnerability. 
Now, the mainstream media, Chris Cuomo and CNN and others, would like this discussion to be about marital infidelity or adultery or girlfriends, but it's, uh, it's a much more troubling issue, sexual assault and rape. Bill Clinton is a Bill Cosby-style sexual predator. But what Hillary has done is even worse because it is Hillary Clinton uh, who has intimidated uh, and bullied uh, and threatened Bill Clinton's victims, either intimidated them so they wouldn't respond to subpoenas, as in the case of Kathleen Willey, or intimidating them so they wouldn't go public with the media. Uh, and that abuse of women, um, I think, is going to be explosive on the campuses. That is the narrative that the Clintons fear. Now, in some cases, for example, the case of Juanita Broderick, Hillary did the intimidation herself, squeezing her hand tight, looking her into her eyes and saying, we appreciate everything you're doing for Bill. In other cases, of course, Hillary would hire heavy-handed private detectives like Jack Palladino uh, or Anthony Pelicano to terrorize these women kill their pets, threaten their children, smash their windshields, slash their tires, ransack their homes repeatedly. Uh, these are the Gestapo tactics of the Clintons. And all bets are now off because Hillary has chosen to get back into the ring rather than ride off into the sunset with their stolen money uh, and, their, and their fame and their prominence. Their insatiable desire for power and money has gotten the best of them. And therefore, I think it's all back on the table. Vince Foster, Travelgate, uh, the selling of pardons to the international financier, Mark Rich, uh, the way the Clintons stole the furniture and the silver when they left the White House. What's old new? The communist Chinese generals, the missile secrets. Uh, selling our military secrets to the Chinese. Chinese funny money. It's all back on the table. Uh, I think because none of these things came up, eight years ago within the context of the Democratic primaries, perhaps Hillary thought the statute of limitations had run, or perhaps she thought that the mainstream media would never cover these things. Well, Donald Trump understands all of this, uh, and in his own time frame, uh, and based on his own judgment, he is going to expose the Clintons from top to bottom. Well, you said this a year ago to me, and I, I, I tentatively believed you, uh, but I had to wait and see. It's all come true. And I just am so glad I've been in supporting Trump. Very, very proud of the fact that he's for real. And I'm just on the edge of my seat, quite frankly. This is so epic and so amazing. Uh, speaking of censorship Gestapo tactics, just six months ago, we, we were talking about the censorship increasing on Facebook. We were getting notices from them. They, the media would just say, you're a conspiracy theorist, even though we had the notices telling us we were suspended and things. Drudge picked it up, the, 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 the new independent, true liberal media, that just means freedom. Uh, you know, they've stole the language, folks. We, we, we hammered it. Now there's a Senate investigation. They've had to admit they did it. They blamed it on low-level employees. Their own whistleblowers say, no, it's from the top. Obviously, it's from the top. And Glenn Beck, I don't want to spend time on him, but every time I talk about it, it's all over the news. So I'm glad to be able to you know, at least say this is the archetype of a Benedict Arnold, how he's uncloaked running to Zuckerberg. He came out and said, there is no censorship. Uh, they're not doing anything wrong. Conservatives are dumb and don't know how to use Facebook while Facebook is admitting they've done it. That is unprecedented. Are they blackmailing him? Or, or uh, what is his problem? Doesn't he even get the optics? I mean, even a sociopath wouldn't act like this. He's self-immolating. Or, or, or is that wrong? Well, I've had the exact same experience that you have, Alex. Uh, Facebook has uh, systematically closed down some of my sites when I try to disseminate the truth about Bill, Hillary, and Chelsea Clinton, uh, well, uh, who I like to refer to as the grifters. Uh, so I've had the exact same experience, and I think it is chilling. Look, I've always had a good relationship with Glenn Beck, and he has been uh, generous in his discussion of my books. So I don't know what's happened to him. He seemed to go off the edge uh, when Donald Trump took off as a candidate. Uh, I, I figured that perhaps he'd sold his soul to Ted Cruz and his backers financially, because I'm not sure his communications model at the Blaze is working the way, say, Infowars works or some of the other successful right of center operations. Uh, but I tell you what does I do want to hit today because it's important, and that is uh, I want to warn all of your viewers and listeners about something called Great America Pack. Oh, you talked about this, and Trump's tweeted about it, and it's, he said this isn't me, and they don't. 
I'm glad you raised that. World Net Daily has exposed that, right, Dr. Corsi? There's, there's a major story on World Net Daily today by the great Jerry Corsi. Uh, it's been exposed uh, in the New York Times uh, in a piece by Maggie Haberman, uh, Boone Pickens, the uh, Texas uh, oil billionaire, recently withdrew for a fun, from a fundraiser. This fellow, Ed Rollins, who wears this Reagan credential on his sleeve, works by day at Teneo. Teneo is the Clinton-connected lobbying firm run by Bill Clinton's former running buddy and chief of staff, Doug Band. Yeah. Bill Clinton has made millions out of Teneo. So I think that this is a, a I think Rollins is a saboteur. There was a fellow named Dean on Fox Business News this morning. He's their new finance chairman. He neglected to tell us that as Ben Carson's finance chairman, he spent $4.2 million to raise $5.5 million. Wow. Folks, if you want to help Donald Trump and you want to give, go to the official Trump for President website. Even though he is not soliciting funds, there is a link there where you can contribute voluntarily. That's where you should put your money. Roger, Roger Stone, let me raise this here because look, I know he said the primary, I'm not going to take big money. I get all that, but I want to beat Hillary. I mean, she's going to raise billions. As long as he says, I'm going to follow the Constitution, your money means nothing. It means you're supporting me. That's what it should be. Hey, I, I'm going to follow the Constitution. If you like that, give me money. And then I don't care if he has packs against money. I really think he's at a disadvantage. I know he said he wouldn't do it early on, but now we're in the general election. I mean, am I wrong to say he needs to go ahead and spread his wings and try to get as much money as possible? Hey, look, Alex, he would be a fool to unilaterally disarm. Money is still the mother's milk of, of American politics. It's a weapon. You know? I need it to operate. It'd be crazy if I didn't do that. Exactly. Plus, I think he's smart enough to know that the, the Wall Street, K Street types are going to have their CYA money. Why shouldn't he take it? The point is, I've said here before, you can't buy Donald Trump, not for a dollar, not for a million dollars, not for a hundred million dollars. He's extremely stubborn. That's a good thing when it comes he's to his own, he's, he's his own man. But I would urge people who want to help Trump. There is one legitimate uh, uh, pack out there, the, uh, the Committee for American Sovereignty. I, I know those folks. They're honest, hardworking people. They're not going to steal the money in overhead uh, or in, in rich consultant fees. But this Great America pack run by Ed Rollins is a scam. It's a fraud. Is uh, Benton still sneaking have, around over there? Give the money directly to Trump. That's the best thing to do. Sure. I mean, is Benton still sneaking around in there? Well, he supposedly uh, now has disassociated himself. You refer to Jesse Benton, <clears throat> who sabotaged two uh, Paul campaigns, the Ron Paul oh, campaign. There was no doubt. I watched it happen and held my tongue because I don't, I mean, it was bad. Very, very sad. But since he was convicted of bribery uh, in connection with the Ron Paul campaign uh, only weeks ago, he seems to have dropped from sight, uh, and they say he is no longer associated with Great America PAC. Just uh, the fact that a convicted felon was there a week ago should be a concern for donors. All right. Uh, other, because I want to get to some calls here. They'll bring in some good wild card questions. I want to play this short clip, one of the new mini ads, because Americans' attention spans out of a goldfish now. Uh, but, but uh, you know, exposing uh, what happened with the rape cases. Uh, I just love what Trump's doing. Here it is. I was very nervous. No woman should be subjected to it. But it you, was an assault. He starts to uh, ride on my top lip, and I try to pull away from him. <laughs> Here we go again. Trump, make America great again. Make America free again is my slogan. Uh, I want to get some calls. Amazing points here. Other points we should know about, other attacks. What keeps you up at night with concern? I know you're just too busy charging ahead, Roger Stone, but what else? Uh, I'm not up at night with concern. I'm up at night because I'm excited. This is uh, this is uh, going to be a winning campaign, uh, and I'm just uh, grateful to stand outside the tent and uh, uh, and uh, do my own thing. Uh, I do think. Uh, did, did you talk to the next president of the United States this morning? Uh, I, I did, in fact, uh, call to congratulate him uh, on uh, on this ad, which I think is spectacular. But beyond that, as you know, uh, our conversations are, are proprietary and they're personal. Uh, Donald Trump uh, is not scripted by anybody, certainly not by me. I know that, I know that. But I tell you, you got to watch out because they figured out that uh, you're definitely influential in there. <laughs> Trump, can, Trump can read. Good God, the, the, it's not as if the Clinton's record is unknown. All this information is out there. 
You've presented it for years, I've had, as have others. Let me ask you a question, because I've, I've been out to dinner with you and stuff. You're, you're in good shape, really good shape for your age. You, you, you send me emails and text messages at 2 a.m., 7 a.m., 6 a.m. I, mean, I, I mean, I sleep six, seven hours. I got a lot of energy. You got so much energy. I mean, you are, I, mean I, I just hope everybody knows how hard Roger Stone's working. Seven days a week, you are, you are doing stuff, man. Well, it's a combination of exercise uh, in eating right, and then, frankly, natural supplements like uh, like Brain Force. Uh, look, I, I know they try to make us kooks because we believe that herbs and supplements can actually affect your physical and mental performance, but they do. Brain Force is a great product, and it works. Well, sure, they said people were kooks. Mental clarity. So, uh, yeah, I I, uh, I believe in alternative medicine. I see an acupuncturist once a week for balance. Uh, acupuncture has been around for 2,000 years. Western medicine has been around for roughly 200 years. Uh, but uh, look, the adrenaline is flowing. Uh, as George C. Scott said when he was playing a General Patton in a great line, he said, God, I love war. <laughs> this is a war, a war for the future of the United States of America. Yeah, it's a good war. It's an info war. They want to make it physical and shut our free speech up. I'm skipping the break because here's the deal. I may even do a whole show of three hours of dead air soon, four hours, to, to protest the censorship and Facebook and all the things that are coming out. So separate from Beck, though, isn't it amazing that Facebook, I mean, we know they do this in third world countries. They help, you know, the dictators and the communists. But to catch Zuckerberg, and here you are saying they, you know, they blacked you out. They erased your sites. You know, they blocked your sites on the Clinton's war on women. Oh, that was one of them they took down. And we, and we just kind of like, yeah, that's what they do. This is outrageous. These people are authoritarians. Well, look, I think they regret ever letting the internet go forward. Life was so much easier for the establishment when they had three uh, television networks and a couple national news. Senator Rockefeller said that before he left office, remember? Yes, indeed. Uh, it, it, for example, if the Kennedy assassination were to happen today, there would have been so many cell phone cameras on the, on the uh, Dealey Plaza, it would be impossible to suppress the truth. But since you had one cameraman, uh, and I think we both agree that his film was alt later altered. Well, they admit it. Uh, uh, and they do admit it, um, it. It would no longer be possible. The truth can no longer be suppressed. That's why they keep talking about regulating the Internet. They don't want to regulate the Internet. They want to shut it down because patriots and everyone else can now communicate with each other. And this is the famous fight when Drudge was told last year by the Supreme Court Justice at a meeting, he said, they're coming after everybody next year. They're coming after us. Now they've whacked Scalia. There's no doubt. They are moving. This is a war, folks. This is it. And I think they're failing. I think because Trump arising during this time is such a powerful force with the presumptive nominee now, basically like Godzilla in front of us as our, as our leader, and we're all turbocharging. It gives us all cover. We are routing these bastards. Well, and just uh, look, I, I've met a lot of tough guys in my day. I've never met anybody tougher than Donald Trump. The guy is, uh, uh, he's courageous, he's bold, he knows he's taking his life in his hands when he goes out there, but he's decided that this is something he must do. I pray for him every day, I pray for his safety. And by the way, he uh, looks totally energized, doesn't he? I know you won't tell me the well, private stuff, I know he is energized, but I mean, he's really energized. He's loving this. Well, and he's doing a, he's doing a West Coast swing here of states uh, where, whose primaries really no longer matter but because he wants to spread the word and show the flag. Uh, and he's going to campaign He's a fighter. California. He jumps out in front of all the communists when they block the road and just marches right in front of them and, like, jumps down five-foot culverts. I just love it. Yeah, no, look, he's a, he's a leader. It's time for America to have a leader. Uh, look, I, I thought Ronald Reagan was the one of the greatest presidents in my lifetime, and I was honored to have a small role in his election. But this election, this election is actually more important. It's epic. It's for all the marbles. This is the epic showdown between the globalists who are for the new world order and those who believe in the Constitution as envisioned by the founding fathers. Not a living document, not something subject to change, meant exactly as it was written at the time. Incredible. I want to go to phone calls. We've only got about seven minutes left. Each quick questions from Carol and Joe and Bill and Tom and Elijah and others. I didn't plug this hour. I skipped breaks. I'm out of control. Buy the products at InfoWarsStore.com. Get the products. I guess I'll play a little bit earlier, but the point is, sign up for the newsletter. We need your support. Spread the word. 
you see it now. They're censoring, they're attacking because we're like high noon to vampires, folks. They hate it. Support Roger Stone. Get his books. It's a war for your future. We love freedom. We love guns. We love private property. We love family. We love Americana, like Donald Trump. We're not perfect, but we just, we, we, we don't have it out for the country. And they got us up off the bench and we're ready to kick butt here. We've come here to kick butt and chew bubble gum. We're out of bubble gum, to quote another great patriot, Rowdy Piper. Uh, let's talk to Carol in Pennsylvania. You're on the air with Roger Stone. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Hi, Mr. Stone. How are you today? Good, thank you. Excellent. Um, before I, I, I ask my question, I've got to say, brain force is the bomb. I, I, I've got to say. I just started thank you. We went out and found out what the best, the safest nootropics are and made it super strong and inexpensive because I want to dominate the market. It's a no-brainer. It's a great nootropic. Don't take too many, though. <laughs> Oh no! It's, it's, it's like the first. I'm telling you, in, in, a half, in a half hour, I was like flat getting it on all eight. Let me tell you. I Absolutely, like, it's, just, it, it's terrific. Um, but here's my question. Now, um, Mr. Stone, if it were up to you, who do you think would be the best VP fit for uh, Mr. Trump? Personally, I think that you or Jesse Ventura or Alex. You know, I think. Well, he, uh, a little bird told me who he might like, but we can't say that on air today. I mean, I mean, uh, he can talk about who the front runners are. I mean, who knows? Who would be the uh, good VP? Uh, you know who I really like, a dark horse whose name you don't hear very much, is uh, Senator Jeff Sessions of Alabama. Uh, I've known Jeff Sessions back to our, to our days in the Young Republicans. Uh, completely understands the immigration issue better than any other member of the U.S. Senate. Has been a bold leader on that issue. Very well thought of in the Congress. Uh, early, early, early supporter of Donald Trump. Uh, so that would be my emotional favorite. Now, Oh, Senator Sessions. I'll have to mark that down. Trump may have to, you know, he may have to move beyond the Trump camp for a running mate. But if I were Trump and I were making this decision, he would certainly be one that I would have on my list. There you go, ma'am. You heard it here first, Carol. Good question. Uh, let's go ahead and go to Bill in Indiana. You're on the air with Roger Stone of StoneZone.com. Yeah, uh, Janitor, uh, Senator Jeff Sessions said that Trump's uh, foreign policy is similar to Henry Kissinger. What do you think about that? Uh, I didn't Trump see that. that. He said Trump, uh, he Kissinger said that Hillary's coming after your guns and Trump's a nationalist. Where did he say that, where did Senator Sessions say that his, his Trump's uh, policies like Kissinger's? Trump's, Trump's policy is, is, uh, is very opposite, like 150 degrees different, right, uh, Roger? I, I've never heard him say that. Look, uh, Kissinger is discredited. Reagan proved that everything Kissinger and my mentor Nixon were trying to do was wrong. Detente, the idea that we could not beat the Soviets, it was impossible. Therefore, we had to give up ground and coexist. Reagan turned that on its ear. So to a certain extent, although Henry Kissinger is in his 90s and he falls asleep in the middle of most meetings, uh, his entire foreign policy has been discredited. It's a new day. Trump has his own foreign policy. Sure, sure. And just to be fair to the caller, I did look it up. Sessions said something like that on Fox News. We put the article up on screen. I don't, I don't know what Sessions meant by that, uh, but I like Sessions. Uh, I do, too. He's, he's a great patriot. Let's jam in a few more here. Joe in New Jersey, you're on the air with our guest, Roger Stone. Hi, Alex. How you doing? Good. Thank you. Good. Um, my question is, what do you think about Hillary dropping out uh, health reasons? Yeah, could she be indicted? Could she? Exactly. I mean, uh, they've got other folks in the wings. And then Joe Biden... And Joe Biden parachuting in. Good question, Roger. Certainly a possibility. Uh, look, we're all on pins and needles waiting to see what the FBI director is going to say. I, I think it is highly unlikely that the Obama administration will prosecute Hillary Clinton. As much as I think Obama and Hillary do not like each other, I think they're in a Mexican standoff because uh, they don't want to talk about what really happened in Benghazi and when the president really learned that our mission was under siege. They don't want to talk about the role of Valerie Jarrett and who actually made the decision to stand down. Uh, I've said before on this program and elsewhere that I believe if the FBI director, who's a good man and, an, and a real law enforcement guy, makes a, a recommendation for indictment, that Barack Obama will pardon Hillary Clinton, uh, claiming that these were highly technical violations and there was no intent. Well, I know you've got to go. You've been gracious to give us an hour, 70-second break. There's one question I forgot. I'll take two minutes, and I'll tell you the question now and come back. Thank you, Roger. I, I was on the treadmill this morning, or the, the elliptical, and it was Fox News playing clips of you on, talking about helping the women that were raped. 
you know, go on a tour. They were implying that you guys had paid them off to make up lies. I wanted to respond to that because it's obviously bull. They settled the cases before he ever said this. They're persecuting these women. Obviously, we need to put them on the road to expose the rape. And there's no shame in helping women who were raped. And we'll be back. The past people thought it was kind of hokey to say we were in a war. Now you see we're in a war. This is real. Humanity's awakening. A few minutes left with Roger Stone and then Paul Watson from London all suited up, coming out of the bullpen. He's got a lot to cover. He had like six stories last night last of the day, like I think five at one time on Drudge. Never seen that. We've had trifecta top three before, but whoa, biggest links on the web. InfoWars and our reporters are kicking butt. Hawaii considers gun owner registry for firearm confiscations. Kit Daniels. So much new breaking news on InfoWars.com with our great reporters. Finishing up, I don't know if you saw it. I was working out for like an hour and a half this morning, and I had Fox News, CNN on, you name it. And it was on Fox News, and then I, I got off, it was on CNN, I heard it on the local radio, like, well, yes, uh, Roger Stone was on Alex Jones, and you know, he said we should raise money to try to help these rape victims go on a world tour. Well, and then they like, you, you like, like just suddenly you just paid these women, they hadn't settled, they hadn't gone public, you know, it's like saying Bill, like, like you know, we paid women to lie about Bill Cosby or something. They just spin anything. You said that publicly, but they were acting like they dredged up some murder confession. Uh, that shows how scared. I don't, I don't know if you've seen this, but it's now in a Clinton ad. They're running a clip of you. Yeah, uh, look, I'm flattered. Uh, this is really simple. Every one of these women made their public accusations many, many years before I met or contacted any of them. Now, it was true that Kathleen Willey, who I admire enormously as a very brave and courageous woman who wrote a great book about her experience was facing mortgage foreclosure. And they death threat her and they kill her animals and ask, where are your animals right. and laugh at her. She's been on. I mean, this she is woman's was, under attack. She was facing a foreclosure of her home where she's lived for almost 30 years. Uh, I, I, along with others, did set up a GoFundMe account to raise money to try to pay off her mortgage. At one time, I was told that Donald Trump made an online contribution to the fund. That would have been great. In retrospect, he did not. Didn't matter. I think the problem has been solved because many, many patriots who watch this show uh, responded. Uh, Good and, job. Uh, and her situation is resolved. Good job, but viewers. she hasn't been paid anything to say, to lie, not a dollar. And, and again, repeat that. Decades before you ever wrote a book about this, this is on record that the guy's a, a predator. Yeah, so the idea that, that any woman has been paid to bear false witness against the Clintons is absurd. Look, Soros pays David Brock, who knows, a million dollars, and he makes up all kinds of lies. He pays him $4 million a year to the overall scumbag organization. Yeah, you won't see that on CNN, though. Well, exactly. I mean, you're open about it. You're like, you know, uh, he called, hey, can you help this lady? They're about to take her house. And we're like, she's yeah, great, my listeners, I mean. Woman, and she needed help, uh, and I'm proud to she be. She didn't uh, ask for money when I had her on 20 years ago. She's never asked for money. The she's point is, I, I expose the Clintons at my own risk because they're, they're, they're thugs. They're so dirty. I mean, I think we're getting close to the fall of the Clintons. What do you think? Uh, I don't think there's any question because their, their tactics are now going to be completely exposed. These are people who have had witnesses beaten, who have had people's homes broken into, who have threatened people, who have used the IRS to audit all of these women. Jones. Broderick, Willie, they all get IRS audits. These are not women of enormous means. How coincidental. By the way, wasn't using the IRS against your political enemies one of the counts of impeachment against Russia? Oh, yeah. They had an IRS enforcer brag on C-SPAN that they were going to come after conservatives. These people are so arrogant, they don't even know what they're doing is illegal. Roger Stone, StoneZone.com, the Clintons War on Women, available at StoneZone.com. We have it at InfoWarsStore.com. Amazing. Thank you for the full hour, uh, and it's just so great to be part of history and, and trying to restore this great republic. Thank you, sir. Alex, I'm always pleased and honored to be here, and I'll see you soon. Thank you, man. I feel good being part of this, folks, and great job the listeners. Helping that lady not have her house foreclosed. Great job standing up for a woman, you know, attacked and the rest of it. I tell you, just the greatest audience ever. You guys bring tears to my eyes. Every man, woman, and child, every race, color, and creed, you're amazing. Now get ready. Paul Watson is coming on. He's loaded for bear from London, England. Strap yourselves in. Get ready. We are back on the Alex Jones Show Live fourth hour overdrive with me, your host, Paul Joseph Watson. Coming to you today, not from London for a change, but from mainland Europe in France, somewhere near the French Alps, halfway up a mountain, not far from a quite famous chateau that was burned down by the Nazis 
in the 1940s during World War II because it housed French resistance fighters who later actually set up camp at the very location that I'm speaking to you from now, which is kind of ironic because, of course, after the Nazis were defeated, the European Union set up a bureaucratic tyranny, an EU federalist superstate that was virtually identical to what the Nazis had planned in a post-World War II world if they had been victorious, which was, of course, a system completely undemocratic, which is what the EU has come to represent. In fact, not just undemocratic, but anti-democratic. And of course, we've got the big Brexit vote coming up on June 23rd in the United Kingdom next month. Project Fear is in full and rampant force. And for the moment, at least, it seems to be working. The polls show that people who plan to vote to remain in the EU outnumber those who plan to vote to leave. And that's basically because we have a lot of dumb people who have basically believed David Cameron's pop propaganda that if we leave the EU, there's going to be World War Three, that Godzilla is going to attack, that the world is going to explode. People are believing that kind of fear-mongering, which is why it remains important to counter it. But if you want a, a yet another insight into how tyrannical and anti-democratic the EU really is and why we need to get out of it, this is out of Breitbart.com. Showdown. EU vows to use new powers to block all elected far-right populists from power. Of course, we had the big election in Austria yesterday, which we'll get on to talk to about in a moment. The president of the unelected executive arm of the European Union has vowed to block all right-wing populists from power across the continent shortly after acquiring the power to exert far-reaching sanctions on elected governments. Jean-Claude Juncker, the president of the European Commission, promised to exclude Norbert Hofer, the leader of Austria's Freedom Party, from all EU decision-making, if elected, ahead of yesterday's presidential vote. This is a quote from Juncker. Listen to this. Quote, there will be no debate or dialogue with the far right. So <laughs> they're openly announcing that even if these, quote, far right, who in reality are just populist parties, the only ones standing up to EU centralised tyranny, standing up to the flooding of Europe with Muslim migrants, if any of those are democratically elected by the voters in their own countries, in EU member states, then the EU bureaucrats, who of course are not representable at all, to the actual citizens of Europe, they'll simply ignore them. They won't talk to them. They won't include them in the decision-making process, which, of course, is centralised amongst EU bureaucrats like Juncker, who get to decide what laws are introduced. The EU Parliament cannot even introduce its own laws. It can't strike down laws. This is how anti-democratic the EU really is. So now they're basically saying... Even if these, quote, far right, which are always just populist anti-EU personalities, even if they're democratically elected by the citizens within those countries, within Europe, we're simply going to ignore them. We're going to pretend like they don't exist. Which is no surprise given how the EU reacts every time European citizens vote to reject its mandates. This is something we've touched on time and time again. In Denmark, Ireland, France, the Netherlands, Greece, people voted to reject the EU over and over again. The Maastricht Treaty, the Nice Treaty, the EU Constitution, the Lisbon Treaty, and the Euro bailout itself. European citizens in all these countries rejected the EU time and time again. And every time, the EU, instead of acknowledging the democratic will of the people, either made them vote again and again until they got the result they wanted or simply ignored the vote altogether. Just like they're now saying they're going to ignore the elected representatives of European countries. Again, that's not a democratic institution. That's a tyranny. Why would we want to be part of an institution 
that's not just inherently undemocratic in the way it operates, but anti-democratic in the way it's basically come forward and said, we're just going to ignore elected representatives of European countries if we don't like their politics, if they're anti-EU, if they're trying to move towards extricating these countries to get them out of the complete mess that is the European Union. So we've got that going on. Of course, we've got the continual flooding of the continent of Europe with Muslim migrants. And now we've got a new report out of Germany. This is extremely interesting because it's something we've looked at in the past. Report, migrants committing disproportionately high crime in Germany, while media and government focus on, focuses on far-right thought crimes. Remember, again, we had the report, Facebook, not only working with the German government, with Merkel, but with actual former Stasi officers to police thought crimes on social media, in some cases leading to home visits by the police if people make anti-migrant comments. And yes, in some cases, those are hate speech, calling for you know them to be put in death camps and gassed. But they've mixed it in with legitimate criticism of mass immigration. So, for example, in the Netherlands, you had somebody who merely called their own government's refugee plan, quote, a bad policy. He got a home visit from the cops, warned to tone down his rhetoric. So, again, they mix in all these examples of people calling for them all to be gassed with what is clearly legitimate, quite neutral, quite laid back criticism of the general migrant policy that's being enforced by these European governments. But we've had the rape scandals being covered up in Germany so as to not, quote, legitimize critics of mass migration. That came out before the mass molestation in Cologne on New Year's Eve, where hundreds of German women were sexually assaulted. And now Breitbart reports that the massive migrant crime wave is surging across Germany, according to figures buried in a new report released by the country's interior ministry. Again, they've tried to sneak this out. The data reveals that without migrants considered, crime rates in Germany would have remained roughly static since 2014. But in fact, the country recorded an extra 402,000 741 crimes committed by migrants. Bearing in mind, this is a country with a population of around 80 million. An extra almost half a million crimes committed by migrants in the last year alone in Germany. While much of this criminality concerned illegal border crossings, German authorities instead talked up a, quote, record surge in crimes by right-wing radicals, because that's the main threat while... Women and children are being raped while these crimes are being committed by actual migrants on a record scale, while people in Bavaria are trying to obtain weapons licenses to get small arms to defend themselves against this. Of course, they're saying that the major problem is right-wing radicals. Because again, if you bury your head in the sand, if you engage in Stockholm syndrome, then of course, the people speaking out against this are going to be turned into the bad guys because that's what you can then focus on. That's what you can then say we're dealing with it while ignoring the real problem. Concerning statistics from the 135-page report reveal that 70%, 70% of pickpocketing, again, this is in Germany, one of the crime types on the rise was committed by non-Germans. Of this figure... 34% was committed by recent asylum seekers, with the rest committed by non-Germans. Foreign nationals are thought to account for around 11 or 12% of the total population of Germany, but were overrepresented in every area of crime. And we've made the point again and again. You can look at every European country. You can look at the stats. You can look at Spain which has a Muslim population of 3.7% that we know of. The prison population in Spain comprises 70% Muslims <laughs> from a population of 3.7%. The prison population is 70% Muslim. You can look at Belgium. Again, 6% Muslim population. Muslim prison population 
45%. And it's the same across other countries. Germany, it's slightly less, but it's still way overrepresented. Again, France is similar to Belgium in those figures. Proving once more, multiculturalism doesn't work. It hasn't worked. People don't integrate. And now we're seeing the rise of Islamist ghettos in places like Molenbeek, which of course led to the protection of Salah Abdeslam, one of the Paris massacre suspects. They hid him. They protected him for months on end. Not other jihadists, not ISIS members, members of the local community. So these figures, these new figures out of Germany, again, just alarming. And they're blaming the right wing for this. The populists. Listen to this. Illegal immigrants and asylum seekers account for around 2.5% of Germany's population, but were also massively overrepresented. Amongst total offences, non-Germans accounted for 27.6%. Massively overrepresented. We'll get more into this and other news after the break. Stay tuned. It's the Alex Jones. We are back. It's the fourth hour overdrive of the Alex Jones Show. Next segment, we're going to get into this shocking report out of an NBC affiliate, which is completely bizarre. If it's not just a direct propaganda blitz for microchipping your child. I mean, if you actually look into the background of this report, there's no other explanation than that they deliberately chose to present this as a kind of news package, the the type that they got caught doing across the networks many years ago where it was coordinated to push a certain product or a certain narrative. Again, this has no actual news value whatsoever. They basically go and talk to this uh, mother of three who demands that she be able to microchip her child as an extra layer of protection. They talk to an expert who says that this is not Big Brother, it's not creepy at all. And the general tone throughout is that it's completely inevitable. That's why it looks like a deliberate propaganda placement, not an actual news item. Again, absolutely bizarre. We're going to get into that after the break. We're going to play the clip. Before the break, I was getting into this new report out of Germany where, imagine my shock, there's a surge in migrant crime. We've been documenting the surge in rapes in Germany for the past, what, 10 months or so since this mass wave started pouring in. And again, going back to these figures, amongst total offences, these are crimes in Germany, non-Germans accounted for 27.6% while illegal immigrants and asylum seekers accounted for 5.7%. So again, massively overrepresented. In all of these cases, as well as those indicated in the chart, non-Germans and illegal migrants outstripped their proportions of crime to their representation in German society. Non-Germans accounted for 38% of all robberies, 38% of thefts, and 43% of thefts that involve a level of aggravation such as assault or force. So again, in every single different crime that you look at, migrants, asylum seekers are vastly overrepresented, proving again that multiculturalism hasn't worked, it doesn't work. I mean, when it came out in Cologne, for example, that many of the molesters who sexually abused women on that night were not newly arrived refugees, some of them were, but the majority had been in Germany for years. So these were the supposedly assimilated migrants that were carrying out these mass assaults of over a thousand women and in other cities as well. These were the guys who we had supposedly integrated into society. And then you talk about the one million plus that have arrived in Germany over the past 10 months alone. You look at going forward, and I talked about this on last week's show, they're talking about you know, 400,000 a year every year. And that's after the current wave of millions a year. And this is going to go on infinitely. And look at how they're treating it in Sweden. Again, the basket case of liberalism being a mental disorder. Report. Bearing in mind, this is a place where, you know, their, their top advisor on Islamophobia, who calls everyone racist for criticizing you know, raping women. He went on to join ISIS. They've got people who are ISIS supporters in control of their migration boards. That's how bad it is in Sweden. We've done reports on that before. 
But now Swedish police excuse migrant rape, blame Nordic alcohol culture and ignorance. They're actually blaming this migrant rape culture on masculinity in general. They're not even, they're making excuses for the migrants. Again, the Swedish police report into rape and sexual assault committed by migrants has blamed Nordic alcohol culture, ignorance, and the non-traditional gender roles of European women for the growing problem. So again, the migrants don't have to assimilate into our con cu culture, we have to assimilate into theirs. We have to cover up our women so they don't get raped. They actually blamed the non-traditional gender roles of European women. And they actually blamed women who don't dress properly. It's their fault that they're being sexually assaulted. Where are the feminists? Well, they're nowhere to be seen, because again, this can't be blamed on cisgendered white males. The report notes that Sweden has the worst rates of physical and sexual violence committed against women in the European Union. Titled The Current Situation of Sexual Molestation and Proposals for Action, the document seeks to explain these statistics, and it concludes... The results are a consequence of Nordic alcohol culture, but also of non-traditional gender roles. It explains on page 20 that, quote, the background to the men who commit sexual molestation is multifaceted. Migrants, it says, might not be able to handle the alcohol, simply feel horny, have ignorance of the consequences for the girls, have misplaced feelings, or be expressing anger. So again, it's all about justifying it to protect the precious Muslim migrants. We'll be back with more after the break. Don't go away. So we were talking about this report out of Sweden, where the citizens are encouraged to give up their garages to house Muslim migrants because there's a massive property shortage and basically nobody can get housing because they've handed it all over to the welfare wave of economic migrants now flooding northern Europe. And again, 1,400% increase in sexual assaults in Sweden since they opened their doors to mass immigration. And of course, now they're blaming it on the right wing in this report saying that the poor migrants who are molesting these women, these poor babies, and again, we've had the reports out of Sweden before, woman gets raped on a train, doesn't report it to the police because she sympathizes with the plight of the migrant. He might have, ex he might have experienced trauma in his home country. Therefore, it's perfectly justifiable and understandable for him to go around raping women. Of course, it has nothing to do with the culture within Islam across the world, whether people are traumatized or not, where women are treated as basically cattle. No, 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 that's nothing to do with it. It's to do with them having, quote, misplaced feelings, according to Swedish police in this report. And this is how they express their anger. They can't handle alcohol and may simply feel horny. These are the actual quotes from this Swedish police report. Again, nothing whatsoever to do with the treatment of women as second-class citizens, as sexual objects being implicit within Islam, which is why we have the Taharush, the rape game, as it's called. You saw the news reporter in Egypt during the revolution, again, raped by dozens of men. She thought she was going to die. You have other cases of that. There was a Dutch journalist who experienced the same thing, suddenly grabbed by 12, 14, 18 men, pulled down into an underground area, viciously raped. These people weren't traumatized. They weren't drunk. They weren't expressing their misplaced feelings. They weren't just horny. This is part of the culture. This is why there are girls and boys in these migrant camps being raped all the time. Yet now European countries are saying that it's acceptable for men in these migrant camps to marry 14-year-old girls. And now the Swedish police are blaming the rape scandal that they're experiencing and have been doing since they flung open their doors to mass migration. They're blaming it on misplaced feelings and Muslim migrants not being able to handle their alcohol. Maybe they're traumatized. Maybe it's the woman's fault because she's not covered up in a burqa. 
That's basically what they imply with this report. So again, similar to Germany, hiding behind excuses, blaming Nordic alcohol culture, which has been around forever, for this new phenomenon. Again, Sweden, this is another report. I remember in Sweden we had that incident in Ikea, I think it was last year, where two Muslim migrants beheaded someone, and then the government's first response was to organize a, a massive march and a campaign for people not to be mean to Muslims. Absolutely astounding. This is why it goes on and on. Hug a Muslim isn't going to work. Blood smeared floors and walls of child migrant center where a Swedish social worker, 22, was stabbed to death in a frenzied attack by an Ethiopian boy who is at least 21. And that's another thing. They always claim to be 15 so they don't face the consequences. So they don't get deported. They're held in juvenile detention for a year and then they're out on the streets again. Blood smeared across the floors and splattered up the walls. These are the horrifying photos from inside the child asylum center where a female Swedish social worker was murdered in a frenzied attack. Alexandra Messer, 22, bled to death after being stabbed as she tried to break up a fight involving two of the young migrants she was caring for. Psychology graduates killing on January 25th at an asylum center for unaccompanied minor refugees who aren't minors. Turns out this guy is not a child sent shockwaves through Sweden and around the world. Asylum seeker Youssef Khalif Noor from Ethiopia is charged with her murder. Noor has told detectives he cannot remember the incident. And he basically said, oh, I didn't sleep very well. I just got angry. Go and look at these photos of the blood-stained apartment. Stabbed her in the leg, severing an artery. Blood everywhere. She's crawling around, begging for help. She died. And if this was a one-off incident, then it wouldn't be a news story, but it's not. We have these migrants killing their own wives in these migrant centers. The doctor turns up to try and help these battered wives who have been beaten almost to death. And then they're beaten up by the other migrants. This is a crisis. Police in Germany, in some cases, refuse to even show up to these migrant centers because the, re the reports of fighting, of brawling, of abuse, of attacks, are just never ending. Go and look at these photos of this blood-stained apartment. This is out of the Daily Mail, and tell me that this is working. It's not working. It's getting worse and worse. Yet these governments are committed to bringing in 800,000 of these migrants. Even in five, six years' time, they're still saying it's going to be 400, 500,000 a month. And the figures are inevitably always higher. So we're going to see more rapes, we're going to see more attacks because we're not facing up to the problem that we're importing a fundamentally intolerant, violent culture and it has to end. But I've ranted about it too much. So we're going to move on to NBC News and we got this clip coming up. Your children will be microchipped sooner rather than later. <laughs> that's, that's the breezy quote from the from one of the news anchors there on this local NBC affiliate. Absolutely brazen propaganda. Let's go to the clip and then we'll analyze it afterwards. Here's the clip, NBC saying that it's inevitable that your kids will be microchipped. Moms and dads, you know that feeling. Your child gets lost in a store, maybe just wanders off for a second or two. Your heart stops though. Panic sets in and you think the worst. It's happened to most of us, but what if you had a secret weapon, an extra layer of safety, so to speak? How far would you go to keep your children secure? Would you be willing to microchip them? Experts tell us the technology already exists. Turns out one Bay Area mother is all for it, and she shared her story with our Melanie Michael. Hey guys, good evening to you both. You know, chances are if you have a four-legged family member at home, it's already microchipped. And if the technology exists to save Fido in an emergency, what about microchipping your child? Before you say, no way, I would never do that, hear one mom's story. It's the longest two seconds of your life, and it's absolute panic. I want my son back. 
We've seen it in movies. This is my daughter! Over and over again, children gone missing. It's terrifying. For Stephanie Rodriguez Neely, life is busier than ever with four children, including a newborn. She knows scary situations can happen in an instant. And for her, it has. If it'll save my kid, um, there's, there's no step that's too extreme. Stephanie's teenage daughter is a special needs child, prone to wander off and trust strangers. For that very reason, Stephanie wholeheartedly welcomes microchipping a child. If a small chip the size of a grain of rice could have prevented a tragedy, I think most parents, you know, hindsight would have said, I wish I would have done it. But Stephanie is in the minority in her Tampa Bay mom's group, where other mothers call this too sci-fi and invasive. You're putting a battery in your kid, you're putting a chip in your kid, and where does it stop? Turns out the technology to microchip your kids has existed since the early 90s, but hasn't really caught on. Is it a little too science fiction for you? Very much so. Um, a well-known technology expert out of Boston tells us microchipping poses little to no health risks and would act as a barcode of sorts. Without question. It could save a life, uh, reunite a family, uh, find a missing Alzheimer's patient. I always tell people, as long as you're doing what you feel is best for your child, y you're not really wrong. And guys, this is what we're talking about, the microchip. I don't know if you can see it in my hand. It's the size of a grain of rice, very, very small. And the expert that we spoke with actually tells us that barcodes were introduced in the late 1960s. And back then, people thought, uh, this is way too invasive and too weird. And now barcodes are so commonplace that we don't even think about them anymore. The expert tells us this will happen sooner rather than later. Oh, so your child is just a product now to be barcoded. And it's no big deal. In fact, it's inevitable. There's nothing you can do about it. So you might as well accept it now. I'm afraid that barcoding cans of beans is very different from placing an implantable microchip that tracks your child inside their body. Bit of a leap there. But you notice how they present it. Firstly, it's not balanced at all. They have like one parent who's thinks it's, you know, too, too sci-fi. But then they have the expert who says, well, no, actually, they've been doing this for years. It's perfectly safe. And in the comments that were on this NBC article, which were expanded on from the video, he basically says that you shouldn't be worried about Big Brother. This is perfectly normal. This is his quote. This is the expert they talked to. When barcodes first came out in the late 1960s, people were appalled. They were wary of them and did not understand the concept. Today, it's so commonplace, we don't even notice it. A microchip would work much in the same way, adding that it will, quote, definitely happen. Once again, they posh on that inevitability again and again. Because, of course, if, if they present it as there's no debate, it's going to happen whether you like it or not, then people are less inclined to resist. This is almost psychological brainwashing techniques, which is very strange why they would have this news report in the first place. I mean, did this, did this woman from the Tampa Bay Moms Group approach a local NBC network and said, I really want to microchip my kid. Can you do a news story about it? Quite bizarre that it would come about that way. And then if you look at the tone, the editorial narrative of the entire piece, of course, it looks like they're aggressively promoting not only the safety aspect, but the inevitability as aspect of the implantable microchip, while, of course, completely downplaying the fundamentally Orwellian aspects of placing a tracker chip in your child and what that could lead to. But, I mean, the reporter there at the end makes it very clear what it could lead to. Sooner rather than later... She says, we're going to pull this off and we could see those microchips in everyone. And then the anchors back in the studio just like, oh, well, that sounds very interesting. So again, this, this is coming from an editorial slant, a narrative slant that says this is inev inevitable. This is for the safety of your children. It's just like barcodes. Nothing bad's going to happen. Get used to it. Here it is. So it's this... Spoon-fed propaganda is what it is. It's brazen. I mean, why? this isn't even a news story. As they mentioned in the clip, 
and in the article, the companies that tried to push this in the late 90s, very cheap and others, and of course more aggressively after 9-11, they, ex they exploited the paranoia of that incident, they went out of business because nobody's interested in this. They had one family out of Boca Raton, Florida, who they put on, I think it was Good Morning America and all these other shows, for a live microchipping of their children. That's how much they were trying to ram it down people's throats as the new trendy thing, the new security measure. They put it live on Good Morning America. They gave it all this propaganda and still nobody was interested. The company went bossed. So for them to say that it's inevitable that somebody's gonna come up with the technology and everybody's gonna accept it just like they embraced the barcode even though that's a completely different thing. You're tracking a can of beans. You're not tracking a child. This is a human. Completely bizarre that they would present it in that way, given that this technology has already been rejected by society. But then, of course, we had the BBC report last year where the people in the trendy European media company had their microchip to access the different parts of the building. So they're, they're still trying to push this, but... I mean, seriously, apart from futurists and transhumanists who will basically put anything in their body for kicks, nobody's interested in this. People fundamentally have a distinct unease about a tracking chip being implanted in their body. But then you go back to the, the trendiness aspect of it. Of course, we featured the videos out of the, the Google conferences where people say, look, this is not going to work. People are not going to accept this if we introduce it under the guise of safety. We're going to have to get it through under the guise of being trendy. This is going to have to be the must-have product, uh, product. And I mean, anyone now can go into their iPhone and see that their every location has been tracked. Most people don't know that that's there. Every time you're in a specific location for a period of time, it logs that location in your iPhone. So, of course, many people are carrying around a de facto GPS tracker chip as it is. But again, it's still quite the leap to having that implanted in your body. You can always turn the phone off. You can always leave it at home. You can't do that with an implanted chip. So, again, extremely disturbing report there out of NBC. The headline is, your children will be microchipped sooner rather than later. We probably won't have time for this clip after the break, but I'll just mention the news story now. This is also up on drudgereport.com. Did we go to war? Indiana residents stunned by military drill. Residents of Beech Grove, Indiana, thought that war had broken out last night after the Marion County Police dispatch was flooded with 911 calls from panicked residents confused about a military drill. And you can go see the tweets in this article Again, it was one of these situations where the police said that they knocked on doors, they told people this was going to happen. But people in numerous different streets said they didn't get any warning, which is why people are concerned about this. They're concerned that these military drills are happening to test the public's response. You can't organically test the public's response if you forewarn them that it's about to happen. You can only do so if you don't tell people. So people were tweeting out last night in this area, did we go to war and no one mention it? Another resident tweeted, we're about a block away and no one told our street. The whole neighborhood was out because we thought the world was ending. So you had explosions, you had gunfire, you had low flying black helicopters that don't exist and are a conspiracy theory, practicing a mock raid on this old hospital building. And people were completely freaking out because they weren't given notice. So again, it goes back to this fundamental concern which is what we saw out of other areas before where they're practicing to do this on the streets of America to merge the military and the law enforcement. And that's why people continue to be worried about this. But we'll get into more news after break. It's the Alex Jones Show. We are back on the final segment of the Alex Jones Show fourth hour overdrive. Portland State students pledged to give money to support Hamas terrorists attacking cafes and schools to rebuff Israel. Absolutely shocking video. Here it is. I'm on 
Tony Horowitz, and I'm here in the Pacific Northwest, the American home of the BDS movement, boycott, divestment, and sanction of Israel. I want to see if these guys are willing to take it to the next level. Um, we're raising money for American Friends for Hamas. So I work for American Friends for Hamas. I work for American Friends for Hamas. Okay. We're not your father's terrorist organization. We've kind of evolved beyond that. Yeah, we're still kind of what we do, but we've kind of rebuilt and rebranded ourselves. And, and uh, you know, you know, Hamas is where it's at. We're raising money to do what you know we do as Hamas. We want to fund operations against Israel, and you know, the type of uh, attacks we're talking about are cafes and schools and you know, soft targets. The type of operations we're talking about against, you know, soft targets, schools and cafes and that kind of thing. Make them feel it. Uh, hospitals and destroy cafes, you know, shopping malls and schools and place of worship. This is the kind of stuff we're talking about. Civilian populations. And uh, this is the only way you can fight back, really. The suicide bomber is all we've got. I mean, that's kind of like, because it's the poor man's F-15. It, it, right, right. And, and it do we get against Israel? And, and that's kind of what we're looking to do. Okay. Thanks awesome. for your time. Yeah. Uh, and fund uh, operations against Israel. That's the kind of thing we're doing. Okay. Well, hey, great. thanks for your time, man. Yeah, of course. Appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. You know, we're essentially the uh, the logical extension of BDS. It's okay. like BDS the next level is what okay. we're doing. We're kind of like the next level BDS. You know, it's like BDS and then we're like BDS plus. You know, we, we're looking to wipe Israel off the map. Yeah, we want, you know, we, we're looking to destroy Israel. We don't want just Gaza. We want to have all of Israel. No, I, I've actually been learning about last in this last school year about everything that's going on over there. So I, I like the sound of what you're doing. It sounds like a great thing to do. Yeah, totally against the Israeli genocide. Awesome. We just want to get rid of Israel. And, you know, yeah. it's for the it's for the Palestinians. Stay off drugs. But we would love you to check out our website. That would be wonderful. Good luck. Thank you. If you feel like donating to help the cause, to fight back, and that'd be great. For sure, well, definitely. And maybe consider making a donation. Sure. Great. Probably like 15 bucks. 15 bucks? Yeah. No, that'd, that'd be great. I don't know, maybe like 10, 20 bucks. 15 to 20. 5 or 10 dollars. And maybe like 10 dollars. 5 dollars. 10 bucks? 10 dollars. 5 or 10 bucks. 10 bucks? Let's say 27 dollars, since that seems to be my Bernie donation. This is all about peace and love. We got to fight back as the oppressors. I agree. I agree. See you, brother. Yeah, I mean, it's important to kind of fight back and not let, not take it lying down, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Hey, sure, peace, absolutely. peace and love. Yeah, thank oh, yeah. you. Peace and love. Yeah, peace and love. See you, man. Yeah. Thanks, bro. Yeah, take it easy. Appreciate it. Hamas thanks you. I thank you. Thank you. Peace and love. Pe yeah. You believe peace yeah. is important, right? Of course. Of course. Yeah. But we got to get peace, you first got to destroy some stuff, you know? Yeah. See you, man. That is, again, absolutely astounding. He's out there. <laughs> talking to these students saying that they're donating to support suicide bombers targeting cafes and schools as a representative of Hamas. Is there no end to the insanity that these social justice warrior students will commit themselves to? Again, if it's done in the name of being trendy, just like the Muslim selfie girl whose apology was heartfelt and now it's being blamed on Islamophobes that people are criticizing her. This was a girl in Belgium who went out to an anti-Islam protest, took a selfie of herself. She became a media darling instantly. People pointed out that she had in fact tweeted that Hitler didn't do a good enough job killing all the Jews. When people pointed that out, when they made that criticism, they were called Islamophobic. Again, advocating genocide and suicide bombings, that's trendy. Opposing that is Islamophobic. That's going to wrap it up for this edition of The Alex Jones Show. Stay tuned for InfoWars Nightly News. Alex will be back 11 to 2 tomorrow. Breaking news at InfoWars.com.